Jonathan O'Toole. Hey, uh, Jonathan, this is Craig Walterscheid from Cradles of Life. Um, I, I have something I wanted to talk to you directly, but I'll just leave this message. Call me as soon as you can. Um, I have some shocking suspicions. Um, we, we sent a documentary team to Nairobi to interview Dr. Jean Kagia about her life, ministry to unwed mothers, and the state of the pro-life movement in East Africa. And in the course of preparing for the interview, and even during the interview itself, we uncovered some very shocking statements by Dr. Kagia that we have recorded. Uh, we became fully convinced that we could not ethically partner with her because of her aggressive promotion of contraceptives and because we have been led to suspect that she prescribes and promotes abortifacients like the coil. Furthermore, our reporters Wavinia Waniasa and Patrick Mwai told us that Dr. Kajia says she is close personal friends with the abortionist, Dr. John Niamu. You know, Jonathan, because you are in Kenya, um, and you know Wavinia, we want to get to you the footage we shot and ask you to please look into these allegations. Um, frankly, I hate to hear myself having to say this, uh, but we have begun to suspect that Dr. Kaja is working with elements within the Ministry of Health to defend the abortion language that was inserted into the 2010 Kenya Constitution. Um, you can call me or email me. Um, I would prefer you call. I, I should be available after 4 uh, p.m. our time or even call this weekend. Uh, I'm really shocked and can't believe what seems to be going on, and we really need your help to get to the bottom of this. You, you know we, we have a saying, you know our saying, uh, when we suspect something's just not right or, or very wrong, we say, there's something rotten in Denmark. That's just a famous saying in English. Um, I, I love the Kenyan people. I have the utmost respect. They're such... Um, pro-life, pro-family, godly uh, people, ethical, moral, righteous people, but in every society there's there's fakers. Um, even among Christians there's fakers. And um, uh, I, I honestly, I have to say, it, it sounds like, it smells like from what our investigations, from our interviews, uh, there's something rotten in Kenya. Please help us out over here, okay? God bless you, Jonathan. Bye-bye. Hey, Craig, good to hear from you. Um, it's actually, let's see, it's actually about 8 p.m. here, so it's sometime in the morning. You're you're there in the L.A. in Huntington Park. Um, so, sure, um, actually, it's kind of hard for me to call you at 4 unless I get up in the middle of the night, but um, I can do that. I can do that. Let me set my alarm. I can wake up and call you. Um, and I just don't get annoyed with me, but let me correct your pronunciation. It's actually Dr. Kagia. Dr. Kagia is how you pronounce it, not Kagia. I've heard some similar things. I actually interviewed her in Nairobi a few years ago, and um, she didn't want me to criticize the 2010 abortion language. She seemed to be defending it, and I just wanted to forget about it. It was such a, it was so frustrating when I, what she was telling me that I've kind of ignored it until her Senate testimony. I actually recorded uh, her Senate testimony. Uh, in 2020, just a few months ago, about the Kahika abortion bill, and she literally said that a highly trained um, doctor should, should kill that, be the one to kill that baby. She used the words "kill that baby." So, this is something I was leaving alone. But I, the fact is, I have to go tomorrow anyway to, um, or soon, I have to go to deliver some things to Dr. Karanja. I will ask him about this. Um, but I don't think that he, out of, you know, for a multitude of reasons, would want to go on record criticizing, um, or would want to criticize Dr. Kagia at all, but I will look into it, and I will ask around, and I will try to get to the bottom of it, and I'll talk with Wavinia and follow up on what, on what she told you and what Dr. Uh, Kagia told her. So it's Wavinia Wanyasa, Wanyasa, that's
that's how you say her name. And um, Dr. Nyamu. Yeah, Dr. Nyamu is definitely an abortionist. Um, so I will try to do my best. You're right, something is rotten, something is not right. And I will do my best to make an effort to get to the bottom of it and reveal uh, what I can see. Uh, if I can shine a light on it, you know, it's important to expose the truth and tell the truth. So anyway, God bless you. I'll try to wake up and, and give you a call after 4 p.m. your time. Thank you very much, Jonathan. Very welcome. Yes, very welcome. You. And I, I wanted also to show you, I, I, I can't, probably can't give this to you at this time. Yes. This is a very rare book, yes. like the other one you were looking for. Yes. But this is by Michael Bray, yes. a Lutheran pastor yes. uh, from many, this is several decades ago. Yes. He has, I think, 12 children now. He's been my friend for since the 1990s. Yes. He spent time in prison in the 1980s because he was involved in... Uh, blowing up two or three, allegedly, two or three abortion clinics in the, Mer in the United States. Um, so he, he was convicted of um, a felony in that, but he went back with his family and fathered several different children after that. And he wrote a book called A Time to Kill. Yes. And uh, this one I, I, I want to loan to you yes. because he has asked me to look for someone who can translate it into Swahili. Yes. So maybe you can help me find yes, that, I that that's someone. That we yeah. shall do. That and, we shall do. and this one is a he, he speaks of different instances. For example, Saint Joan of Arc, yes. uh, wherein Christians who were responsible for the gospel were also forced yes. to use force, yes. to use the sword, yes. to intervene to stop people from killing yes. innocent people, yes. from the times of slavery yes. to the medieval times yes. up till today. Yes. So I thought you would be interested to, to look at this book. Thank you very much. But I will I will come back for it. You'll come I will back come back for it, it. Yeah. <laughs> because it because it's one of the one of the last copies which are available, and I got it directly from the author. Thank you very yeah. much. Very well. I am extremely <laughs> lucky. Yes. Yes. Okay, I've I've been told that at Afia Center, not far from here, there is someone called Dr. John Nyamu. Mm -hmm. Dr. Karanja. Do you know someone at Afia Center called Dr. John Nyamu? Yes, I do. You know him? Yes. Uh, is there anything you can tell me about him? I've been told that yes. he is an abortionist. Is it true? Yes, it is true. He's an abortionist. He's an abortionist. Yes. And he's not only an abortionist. Mm -hmm. Dr. Dr. Nyamu is actually one of the most powerful controllers of the abortion movement in this country and in this part of Africa, in this region because Dr. Nyamu is actually the point person, the point representative person of the abortion movement, the, the international NGOs that promote abortion in this country and in this region. They protect him. Not only protect him, but they fund him and take care of him. Dr. Nyamu is one of the most powerful people in this country, both financially and even in matters political, because he has powerful protection and sponsorship from the abortion movement from the West. Elective abortion is a felony, so why is Dr. Nyamu never prosecuted? You can't prosecute Nyamu. One because he will be defended by people, by the most senior advocates in this country, and some may even be imported. Number two, this is Africa, and you can be able to subvert justice because of lack of the spine when you're dealing with a patronizing world that the country including the judiciary relies on so you do not you you do not go to look for justice in the courts you may never find it there 
and the Ministry of Health, they will not touch Dr. Nyamu. He is not an employee of the Ministry of Health. Okay. He is a private specialist gynecologist. But he is under the medical board, which is an arm of the Ministry of Health. But Nyamu was actually taken to court in this country because of being accused of killing more than 28 babies who were picked along Mombasa Road mm -hmm. and it is the most shocking thing that has ever happened in this country the discovery of those babies and because they had notes and prescriptions coming from his clinic he was actually sued and went to court for a long time for the first time in this country i saw a lot of medical people wearing white coats and in stethoscopes in courtroom in support of dr nyamu ultimately dr nyamu was set free has he broken the hippocratic oath i do not think he subscribes to the so he cannot hippocratic break. oath so you can't you can't you can't break okay. that which you do not uh, subscribe to is and he you, is he your friend he is not my friend in terms of medical and social and the war and standing for the for, for the right of people your senior colleague dr kagia dr jean kagia who's uh, whose offices are in this building said dr nyamu is a very good friend of mine she said she has meals with him regularly and she defended him as a person do you have anything to say about that yes the, she could, he could be extremely friendly they mm. could be friends mm. with dr kagia but i've told you why he can't be my friend is because i would not wish to be associated with a person who clearly and openly supports abortion if dr jean kagia would find it appropriate to be friend and become very close friends with an, an apolog apologetic, apologetic abortionist, then, of course, she has her own rights. That is her business. Um, we interviewed Dr. Kagia at length, I should say cradles of love did, cradles of life, Rather, let me say this again. Cradles of Life interviewed Dr. Kagia earlier last year at length, some months ago. Uh, it's, a, it's an extensive interview. Dr. Kagia, when the cameras were off in front of witnesses, uh, Dr. Kagia asked Wavinya Wanyasa to have her tubes tied, uh, recommending that she had had too many children and should not have any more children, who was, was pregnant at the time, is pregnant now. Uh, Wavinia has told me about this uh, comment after the interview. Subsequently, Dr. Kagia uh, called Wavinia and once again has encouraged her to be sterilized. Do you have anything to say about that advice? Mm, I, at two levels. Number one, I would kindly request that I do not answer anything at all directly to do with Dr. Kagia. All right. But I would advise Wavinia that it is wrong, it is even criminal. It is, and if she is a Christian, it would be going beyond anything known to accept to be joined in the absurdity of contraception, abortion, castration, and 
I mean, and, 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 and tying the tubes, yeah. tying the tying her tubes. Yeah. So I would. It's a female castration. I would, I would, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. I would tell. I would tell now directly to Wavinia. Wavinia. Do not tie your tubes. It is not your duty to do that. It is not necessary to do that. No human being, no woman should ever be subjected to something that is done in animals, cows, and whatever the animals they do. But human beings are created in the image of God. Of God. And you do not, you do not tie the tubes of any woman for any reason. And I advise Wavinia not to accept advice to tie her tubes from anybody in the medical field or outside the medical field anywhere in the world for dr kagia i leave her, to, leave her. her, own, leave her. to her own conscience okay I've, you are on record having having said that yeah. when i met dr kagia first i was introduced to her by wabinia several years ago in uhuru park and i was happy to interview her i had a camera at the time i interviewed her and she told me about her wonderful work she does as helping uh, in terms of helping women in crisis pregnancies and we talked for many long minutes about that but then i came to what i really wanted to ask her about and three times i asked dr kagia regarding the 2010 constitution what we should do how she could advise us to remove the terrible abortion language allowing the ministry of health and others to allow legalized abortion in kenya and three times I worded it three different ways. And those three times, every time, Dr. Kagia said, don't think about that, forget about that, and don't think about that anymore. What do you have to say about that? I respectfully decline to comment on anything to do with Dr. Kagia. I understand, I understand. Now, regarding a certain passage in the Bible, there's a doctor who, in our interview, I won't tell you who he or she was, but there's a doctor who, in our interview, uh, referred to a passage from Timothy, a famous passage where, where the Apostle Paul told Timothy that if anyone doesn't provide for the members of his own family, that person is worse than an infidel. And this doctor, so we're not talking and you're not responding specifically about Dr. Kagia or any other doctor right now, but you're responding to this idea. That the Bible authorizes, this doctor said, contraceptives on the basis of Paul's command that uh, a man must provide for his own household. And from this doctor's perspective, that command to Timothy means we should use contraceptives. Is that a perversion of the scripture or is this correct? There is nowhere in the whole Bible, not just in Timothy, mm. nowhere in the whole Bible is the idea of contraception ever at all given as an edict, as an advice, or as anything. Is it even winked at? Not at all. And, and, and what I want to say is that, that I would consider it extremely rude for anybody to associate the Bible with their unchristian behavior and beliefs. Quote any other thing you want to quote if you want to do the things you want to do, including contraception, but not the Bible. Not the Bible. The Bible is the book of life. It doesn't need any other definition. It is the book of life. It is the word of God. So to quote it in defense of sterilization is, is, is a it's curse. Evil. It's evil. It's evil. Yes. Um, Are you aware? Now, I know you have told me you are not going to comment, comment on anything uh, regarding Dr. Kagia directly, but I'm going to ask you anyway, 
whether you forgive me or not, I have such audacity. Uh, are you aware professionally, because you have sworn and are, let me, let me back up, let me back up, Dr. Karanja. You have sworn the Hippocratic Oath. I have. I have. The full oath, which says, I will not perform abortion. I have. Yeah, and I will do no harm. In fact, the whole, the whole foundation of the Hippocratic Oath is primum non nocere. In whatever you do, first, do no harm. On issues of abortion, it even says if in your mind you contemplate giving anything or any concussion for the purposes of procuring an abortion, you have already broken the oath, you already excommunicated yourself from the church of God, from the church of God and, fr and from, uh, from being from, a doctor from being a doctor yeah, you are not never a doctor. mind whether you are Muslim or it Christian it doesn't matter yeah. you are from that time a witch a witch person if you are a man is a witch you, you are a witch you are a witch because whatever you are doing now you are doing on foundations that the founder of the profession known as medicine Taught from the beginning that to practice this act, you must not that you need to agree. No, you must. You can't be a doctor and break the oath. You are outside the definition of a physician. Yes, you to be a physician, you must respect the Hippocratic oath. So when we say Dr. John Yamu, this is only a formality. He is. He is not really a doctor. He is not a doctor. He is an abortionist. All right. All right. An abortionist, maybe can even other people can cure, can treat a lot of things, but that does not make them doctors. Yeah. To be a doctor, yeah. you must respect the Hippocratic Oath. The Hippocratic Oath. Yes. Does Dr. Kagia, to your knowledge, prescribe chemical or hormonal contraceptives? No comment again. No comment again. Now, regarding chemical and hormonal contraceptives, are they potentially abortifacient? Not potentially. They all chemical... You see, the chemical contraceptives are made from two hormones, estrogen and progesterone. They have a minimum of five mechanisms of action. Prevent ovulation by attacking the egg. Mm. Affect the fallopian tube. Affect the pituitary gland. Affect the cervical mucus. But over 50% of modern contraception works by affecting the endometrium so that the con so that the little baby cannot be implanted in the womb indeed it is correct to say at the level of science that all all contraceptives that are dependent on the two hormones estrogen and progesterone way up work by causing abortions it is not that they are potentially abortifacients they are abortifacients they cause abortions they are made to do that it is not that they do that as a side effect hormonal contraceptives are made to cause abortion they are a tool of chemical abortion does this include uh, pills, injections, and coils? Co co coil is on two levels. The original coil, the Lipe's loop, worked. I wish you could give me just one minute I show you what I mean. All right. Because I have it here. All right. All right. <laughs> These are, these are the demons. 
I want you to look at them and know them. The demons as they exist. This is this is the lipes loop. It is the lipes loop. Like you can see if you pull it up, it gets straight. If you do it like that, it goes into a coiled system. In fact, the name coil comes from this gadget. That's the name where the name coil is. Like you can see, it has a plastic material on top and it has a nylon, two nylon strings here that normally are left in the birth canal when this is put up. Why was this made up and how does it work? This gadget the coil has only one mechanism of action it is made to prevent implantation it is made to poison the lining of the womb this is an abortive an aborting an aborting creation it doesn't have any other mechanism of action this is the coil i understand and there are modifications of it Initially in the 70s, it was found in the third world, including Africa here. During that time, what was available in your country and in the Western world was this. This is a copper tea. Oh. A copper tea is also referred roughly as a coil, but you can see it is not even coiled. It is in a tea, and what you see being black there, this is copper that is copper and that is copper and it is put on this frame of plastic again the two strings that rest outside to remain in the in the in the in the, in the to remain in the bath canal for it to be felt by the woman wearing it no it is still in and number two to be used to pull it out when the time comes for it to be pulled out where is the where is the chemical that causes the uh, now action this copper is a vicious cardiotoxin mm. it kills the baby it goes for the baby, it kills the baby. That's why this thing looks smaller than the coil. If you look at the coil, the coil is much huge because you need it this size because to it causes more. to deliver, to mm. deliver what it needs to do. But this you need little copper Very little. and you will kill any developing baby in the womb. Wow. It does not work in any other way. Mm. It works by causing abortions. So, do coils therefore work like contraceptives? No. Co some contraceptives sometimes prevent ovulation. Sometimes work on the pituitary gland. Sometimes work on the cervical mucus and prevent ascent of the male seeds into the, into the, into the upper reproductive system. But this is actually introduced inside the womb for one purpose to directly kill the baby no it does not reach the ovary it doesn't affect the ovary all the pituitary gland all the pituitary gland all the mucus in the cervix all the movement of the fallopian tubes it only kills baby by either this one by directly poisoning the baby with the copper and the plastic in it causing the inflammatory reaction in the lining of the womb the endometrium and therefore huge cells called macrophages which eat up the little baby and kill it even before implantation there is no such a thing in terms of abortion as vicious as this and the other one too this one too yes okay. but there is even a third one this one here is called melina 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 is this one oh. this fat one with a fat stock here now you can see this fat one here mm -hmm. this fat stock is actually levonorgestrel is a hormone is a very very powerful progestogen it is put here so that you can have dual function number one use these to cause inflammation and make sure that the baby can implant and these 
thin out the lining of the womb so that the baby cannot implant. Double attack, double confrontation for the baby deliberately to kill the baby. Now, there may have been, you know better than me, there may have been some confusion decades past as to the mechanism of these devices. Uh, you know better than me. But at this point, 2021, is there any excuse for a pro-life physician to be either prescribing or recommending or excusing this uh, mechanism, this if, device? If, if they are doctors, I can tell you clearly, and they have been near anywhere medical facility for the last 40 years. The mechanism of action was, been, was, was always clear. Well known. Yes. Okay. It never, there has never been any change in the mechanism of action of this thing. This device was created to cause abortions. So if they're claiming, not anyone specifically, if, if, if there are doctors claiming to lead the pro-life movement or to be pro-life doctors or leaders, and yet they, and they are physicians or claiming to be physicians, and yet they are excusing or promoting this mechanism, are they pro-life? They are not physicians in the first place. Ah. There are a lot of pro-life people who are not doctors. Yes. Being a doctor is double-edged because yeah. you are calling for the sword of our Lord. If you kill a little helpless baby, deliberately. You're not a physician. You are not a physician. Can you be pro-life? Pro-life. How can you be pro-life and at the same time killing little babies? Uh -huh. Yes. That's contradictory. So you are neither a physician nor a pro-life person. Are you aware of any pro-life leaders or leaders claiming to be pro-life or, or to be physicians who are promoting these things? They are all over the place. Yeah. And they are all over the place because of many, many reasons. One of them is because of their double standards. Number one, idiocy. Number three, pretense. Number four, greed, and especially greed for money. If you are, you have been trained as a medical person. There is a large market from the Western NGOs, Mary Stops, IPPF, and all other organizations like UNDP, UNDPA, UNFPA, the World Bank. The, all these organizations will pay you beautiful dollar if you accept to use your knowledge to kill babies. So if you enter their pay, you become a slave to the demons. And you may think you are a doctor, but you are not a doctor. You excommunicate yourself the first time you kill a baby. Has Dr. Kagia, your senior, has she publicly defended these mechanisms? No comment. No comment. I understand. The Ministry of Health has spoken about a cadre. Their word is cadre. In their statement opposing the Kihika abortion bill. And they said that that cadre is an exclusive cadre. I'm paraphrasing now. Which uh, cadre is authorized to determine when a pregnancy may be terminated. What do you think that means? I mean, I think it means madness. 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 Mad, 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 mad. Because it is pretense and um, confusing and destroying and distorting. And especially when you talk like that of the Ministry of Health is extremely criminal because you mislead those who rely on your opinion. And especially the policies from the Ministry of Health which is at the helm of the practice of medicine in this country. When they use that term, they are being deceptive. And they are not only being deceptive, because the Ministry of Health is 
is not is is not somebody it is a functional unit that is getting advice from people mm -hmm. the people who advise the ministry of health mm -hmm. to have any group of people that give any reason that says you may kill a baby for any reason that group is a poisoned group is a terribly compromised group they're exo hippocratic also they are not medical people they have excommunicated themselves and therefore exo hippocratic when you excommunicate you excommunicate yourself when you in your intention so they, when they say termination of pregnancy in this specific context they're not talking about molar pregnancy they're not talking about ectopic you can't terminate a disease mm -hmm. pregnancy is when the male and the female egg unite at that instant when you have a one-celled human being that is pregnancy fertilization fertilization yes yes that is when pregnancy starts in biology that's elementary actually pregnancy starts biologically in embryology when the male seed and the egg unite in fertilization what is created is a human being who is one celled but with everything they will ever need in their life that is when pregnancy starts pregnancy takes two roots a pregnancy can become a disease and therefore the issues of terminating it do not arise because Hippocratic doctors from the beginning of known medicine have always ways to deal with the diseases mm -hmm. and they are formulated, are written down, even the procedures to deal with issues of such a diseases exist and that now comes to the issue of ectopic pregnancy and molar pregnancy so, so the ministry of health is clearly not talking about either of those no it can't be when because they that's what it is. when they talk yeah. about termination of pregnancy they are so, talking about the second leg of pregnancy elective abortion which it, means it has gone into the womb I, and therefore they aim yeah. to destroy to kill to I, remove what is to abort to abort is to stop i i've researched this term yes uh, termination of pregnancy yes. for, for many years yeah and i did a further research yes. last year yeah when one of your colleagues but i won't say his name yes. a very handsome gentleman yes but i won't tell you his name yes responded to the question that i'm asking you yes and he said yes. that the ministry of health by termination of pregnancy yes. means um something like inducing childbirth something like a cesarean section the ministry of health does not mean elective abortion in this statement they released in opposition to kahika's bill i researched and i found in india in north america in europe in the united kingdom in the history of the world in the history of the top term no evidence that it has ever been used by pro-lifers by pro-choicers by anyone to refer to anything other than elective abortion did i make a mistake did i miss something no you didn't make and you didn't need to do all that research uh -huh. because this is elementary actually does not need research it is elementary biology mm -hmm. it is elementary embryology so what do you say what do you say it is when you use the word termination of pregnancy you mean deliberate killing of a healthy baby at whichever gestation you intend to do it that is what termination of pregnancy is all about in science in embryology no research necessary 
No such term has ever been used no, for a cesarean section. You can't use it. Why would a physician say such a thing? Because there is the called the lumbering of the confused um, people who trained in medicine and now they can't find their way in, especially in the war against abortion. They think they are pro-life, but they are totally deceived. They are totally confused. Is it possible that out of desperation, because the Ministry of Health was helping us to fight the Kahika bill, out of desperation for the help from the Ministry of Health, that some people are entering into even deliberate confusion and spreading deliberate confusion out of that desperation to keep the Ministry of Health to be perceived on our side. The Minister of Health has never been on the side of the pro right. All right. Number two, only somebody who is completely misinformed may think that the Ministry of Health can ever be pro life. Ministry of Health is halfway funded by abortion agents, is controlled by abortion agents, employs senior abortion agents. So the Ministry of Health has never been pro right. But the Ministry of Health is in catch 22 in terms of the Kehika Bill. Because any idiot knew that the Kehika Bill was purely an abortion bill. Abortion at any gestation, from conception up to birth of a baby. That is what the Kehika Bill was all about. The Constitution refuses that. The Ministry of Health is the arm of the government that deals with health. And therefore, the Ministry of Health was not saying what it thinks. It was saying what the governments want to say. So, so when Susan Kehika was going around for weeks and months, uh, in defense of her bill, saying that the bill did not, uh, she told my mother-in-law, by the yes. way, I'm telling you, that the bill did not legalize abortion. She told people, many journalists, it was reported on that the bill did not legalize abortion, did not legalize abortion. Was she lying? Yes. And uh, yes, again, because Senator Kehika is an extremely intelligent woman. But Senator Kehika is, uh, is halfway as American as you are. Mm. And uh, her American and Senator Kehika, Kehika actually is, I hear, is a great friend of your vice president. Mm. Uh, this uh, Kahama, 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 Kahama yeah. uh, Harris, uh, somebody who has herself is not only an abortionist, but uh, a terribly, a terribly, a terribly dis disorganized person. Because I saw one of the picture, one of the clips of yeah. her, in fact, marrying off two sodomites and saying their <laughs> husband and wife. So she, if, if Kehika is a friend of these Kahama Naris. Is it called a Kahama or what? Yeah, uh, Kamara. Kamala, Kamala. Yeah. <laughs> yes. May I just say Camel? Yes. <laughs> now, yeah. Kehika is extremely intelligent. Kehika knew from day one because she was working for four main groups. There are others on the sides, but four main groups. She was working for Mari Stops. She was working for UNFPA. She was working for IPPF, the World Bank, and she was working for UNDPA. Those were the main sponsors. UNFPA? You, yes. Is there any chance, is there any chance that she was simply uh, well-intentioned and ignorant and simply needed to be informed? No. Kehika did not need any education. She knew directly she wanted to introduce an abortion law in this country that was all encompassing from conception to birth against the Kenyan constitution. She knew that from the beginning because Kihika did not conceptualize the bill. The bill was conceptualized by another senator six years, four years previously. So in instead of trying to educate, if she's not ignorant... Yeah, she's not ignorant. Instead of trying to educate her, should we be what? Should we be exposing? Should we be confronting her and calling her to repent? 
not repenting. Repenting is a bit. She should be arrested first. You can't. Uh -huh. She cannot. She cannot repent. She should be arrested before. Yes, she must be arrested because number one, this country, our constitution, does not allow deliberate killing of babies and especially it's conspiracy to murder isn't it if i if i wanted to kill my wife yes uh, even if i hadn't done it yet if i begin to be talk about it should be if i begin to talk with you about doing it yes i must be arrested you should be arrested you should be arrested and you should be and you should be taken to task for why you intend from a position of authority to deform the public who look up to you and especially on something that is aimed at attacking and destroying our own constitutional preservation of life is it going too far to say it is conspiracy to genocide it is not conspiracy to genocide it is genocide because every murder that you see starts in the mind like you say if you think about killing your wife you should be arrested that is correct when you think about killing kenyan children you should be arrested you are thinking about killing kenyan children once you is express genocidal. it once you express when it. you express it it is genocidal you should not only be arrested, but you must be taken for due process in a competent jurisdiction and be forced to pay for your evil. And Kihikas was an evil mind. So this was a message that I sent to Kagia. I don't, I don't think I need to call her a doctor because a doctor is supposed to be, or oh, a pro-life doctor. So, uh, you know, um, just reaching out to see how I could get help, um, direction, you know. And her emphasis again was, were you not on any kind? This is somebody you're saying, I'm just weeks to delivery. And she said, you know, were you not using any contraceptives, you know? And she was very harsh. And um, in short, it was like, <laughs> I, I, I have nothing to do with you, you know. It's like I made a mistake, um, you know, kind of like almost reiterating that we are the ones who create. It's not about God and we should be controlling that. So it was very clear with what she said. And so my message to her, after a lot of conviction, because after she, when she spoke that, I, I broke down, literally, and I just couldn't respond. And I just let her ride on it. Uh, you know, they say when you are the one who is in need or suffering, you're literally a slave to the person who you're reaching out to. So this is my response to her on text. I said, thanks for the talk yesterday. I just wanted to reiterate that despite my current situation, I know that every life is designed by God and that contraception is an act against the maker. The resources may not be available to me right now, but he will provide. I just thought it important to highlight that contraceptives are siblings with aborticians. I will carry my cross, and Yahweh will carry me and my blessings that may be seen as a burden to people now. Once again, thank you for the talk. I am now going to present to you the entire interview of Cradles of Life with Dr. Jean Kagia.
So no one can say we've taken her out of context because I'm going to present not only our interview with her, but the full recording that I have of the Senate testimony. Uh, not only the clip where she said, kill that baby, that the highly trained physician should kill that baby, but the context of that clip. I'm going to present them here to deliver me and anyone in this project from any accusation of having taken her out of context. So here is her interview coming right up in its entirety. But to contextualize it, if you have dealt with evil, and I have dealt with my fair share of evil, and if you have discernment, you will know that an evil person especially the most effective sort of evil person, is not overtly evil. You have to read between the lines, the way you had to read between the lines of what the serpent said in the Garden of Eden. So all the children of that serpent, and I'm telling you, Dr. Kagia is a child of that serpent. And his children always present themselves as the advocate for good very cleverly and often with religious especially christian language and if you listen to them long enough and look in their eyes long enough you'll be lulled into a state of mind which turns off your critical thinking powers your powers of discernment so as i turn you over <laughs> along with our reporters to this serpent and yes i'm calling her an insidious serpent an example number one of the banality of evil. Whether you're inclined to agree with me or be very angry with me for saying it, nonetheless, I am saying it, and I'm saying it from conviction and from perception. And the context is this. Here are facts that it is impossible to refute. First, four facts one, two, three, and four from her interview you're about to watch. Number one, she perverts the passage from Paul's letter to Timothy, where Paul says that if a man doesn't provide for those of his own household, he's worse than an infidel, worse than someone who has denied the faith or who is outside the faith. She uses that passage to argue for contraceptives, even though that passage, as Dr. Karanja said, and no passage in the Bible, in fact, argues for contraceptives. By the way, the one example of contraception in the Bible, which would be Onan, is a man who God killed for deliberately not conceiving a child. Also in that Timothy passage, she seems to have ignored two other things that Paul says in the very same chapter. Number one is that Paul specifically says that old women should not talk about things when they don't know what they're talking about. Number two, in the same passage that she hallucinates and asks us to enter into her lie and hallucination that it is arguing for contraceptives, in the same very same chapter, Paul says he wants young women to what? to bear children. So Dr. Kagia in this interview completely twists and wickedly, satanically perverts the letter of St. Paul to Timothy. It means not at all what she is saying. And she twists the word of God. Number two, in this interview, she has different standards and she makes it clear. She has different standards for whether she will prescribe or insert coils, and we specifically asked her about coils. Not only the other abortifacients, which are potential abortifacients, um, the progesterone and estrogen-based um, oral injections, implants, other uh, contraceptives, which have different mechanisms of action, of which one is the mechanism of causing an abortion and killing a baby, as she says in her Senate testimony, kill that baby. So not only does she have different standards 
for whom she says that for some Catholics, some Protestants, depending on their perspective, depending on what they think about their lives and their bodies, she'll prescribe it for them, she strongly implies. But for others, she said you can't impose your worldview on them. But the problem is with saying it's some it's one way for some, it's one way for another, is that she took an oath. Maybe she didn't take an oath, maybe I'm wrong. But as a Christian, she claims to serve the God of truth. And either these things kill babies or they don't. We've been told by Dr. Karanja, and I'm sure that Dr. Kagia knows that the coils that we specifically asked her about, and she gave a subjective answer, have only the mechanism of killing babies and that the other chemical and hormonal contraceptives that are not coils have killing the baby as one of five mechanisms. So in either case, you either are killing a baby or probably or very likely could be killing a baby. And she says that whether or not you advise people to do this is based on what their denomination is or what their perspective on their life is. This is a repudiation of truth and of the Holy Spirit of truth and of Jesus Christ who says, I am the truth. You give a murder weapon to one person because of his perspective and you don't give the murder weapon to the other person because of his perspective. That is a goddamned lie. Again, in this interview, she says repeatedly that attempts to overturn the abortion language inserted by the bingos, the big international abortion NGOs, into the 2010 Kenyan constitution as a beachhead to try to spread legalized abortion across Africa. She says multiple times in this interview, if you will pay attention, that those attempts to overturn and remove that satanic language are a waste of time. Don't do it. She says, just focus on even uh, evangelization instead, which belies the fact that the Bible says very clearly that the ministry of law is prerequisite to the gospel. Paul, again, Paul says in the New Testament, without the law, there is no knowledge of sin. So your gospel ministry actually becomes very ineffective when you don't establish the law, when you allow a law that is a lie that says that certain groups of people that Dr. Kagia defends have the right to kill people. That's a lie. God has never given them that right. And when she says that we should ignore, in this interview, that we should ignore that and we should, uh, it is a waste of time for us to try to change that language, she is serving Satan. Finally, in this testimony, she says, um, she responds to and defends her language in her Senate testimony, which we will play here, where she says that only the highly trained physician should be authorized to kill that baby. Now, that brings us to some things that we have the proof of that she doesn't say directly on camera in this interview. Number one, Ann Kyoko said very clearly, and others have said, that Dr. Kagia worked along with the Ministry of Health to craft the statement in response to the Kahika abortion bill. That statement echoed Dr. Kagia's statement in her Senate testimony, and it used the word cadre, the Ministry of Health, in the statement that they wrote in collaboration with Dr. Kagia, said that only a highly trained cadre of physicians should be allowed to terminate pregnancies, or in Dr. Kagia's language, kill that baby. Dr. Wahomi later came on to a discussion group and pretended that termination of pregnancy meant um, cesarean section or induced labor or induced childbirth. That is nonsense. Um, there is no such definition. He was completely proven wrong. I don't know if it was out of idiocy or out of um, simply, you know, pitiful, pitiful ignorance or out of malice. I don't think it was out of malice, but regardless of his intentions, it was a very stupid and ignorant thing to say. And it is not true. Termination of pregnancy around the world, in any culture that speaks English, since the introduction of the term decades ago has never meant anything other than elective abortion. 
abortion. Now, another thing you won't see in this interview is that when we turned off the camera, Wavinia has testified, and I will include this testimony later in this video, that, let me give you a context. Wavinia was pregnant. In fact, this day she's pregnant. She's due any day now to give birth to her sixth child. When the camera was off, Dr. Kagia advised Wavinia to have her tubes tied to be sterilized so as not to have any more children. And in a follow-up phone conversation with Wavinia, according to Wavinia, Dr. Kagia was very condescending and blaming her for the pregnancy. And again, advised Wavinia to use some form of contraceptives so as not to have more children. Also, Kingori and Wavinia both will testify that, Wav that Dr. Kagia rather said very clearly when Wavinia had thought that Dr. Nyamu, the abortionist at Afia Center, had died. Dr. Kagia said, no, no, we should not kill him. And I quote, he is a very close friend of mine. She went on to say that she has uh, lunch with him, dinner with him on a regular basis. And we are very close friends, Dr. Kagia and the abortionist, Dr. Nyamu. Now, finally, as we begin to watch this interview with Dr. Kagia, and I say doctor only as a formality, because she as much as admits, and I know it to be a fact from other sources, that she prescribes abortifacients. She is, in fact, an abortionist, not a Hippocratic physician. But anyway, Dr. Kagia, when I first met her years ago in Uhuru Park, I interviewed her, and three times I asked her about the language in the 2010 Constitution that allows for legalized abortion under the control of the Ministry of Health, under the monopoly of their cadre, and that is their language, not mine, to kill those babies, as Dr. Kagia says. They should be allowed to, if they're highly trained and highly qualified. Again, in the interview, she's the one who says that we should not try to overturn that language in the Constitution, which allows a health exception to kill African babies, Kenyan babies, constitutionally, in contradiction to the part of the Constitution that says life begins at conception. So in my interview with her, three times I asked her, what can we do? What should we do? I rephrased it three different times to excise, to remove, to oppose, to get rid of that language. And three times she told me, don't think about that. Don't worry about that. Forget about that and a darkness and a heaviness came over me. It was horrible. I realized in my soul that I wasn't facing a very evil spirit and I could only call upon the Holy Spirit of God as I invoke him now, O Holy Ghost. For in the ears of everyone who has ears to hear, as they listen to this interview with Dr. Kagia, despite her satanic gift mealy-mouthed equivocations, subjective, ethical nonsense, exo-hippocratic reasoning, and perversion of the Bible. Let them hear the truth that this is a deceiver, and that the reason we are drawing attention to her is because she is example number one, especially in East Africa, of how the pro-life movement worldwide and especially in the West, has been subverted. And if we don't wake up and enforce the law and excise abortion language from our laws and ignore and repudiate the Dr. Kagias who tell us that somehow we're going to evangelize the majority of people, that's never going to happen. There's always going to be lawbreakers. We must enforce the law and defend the innocent legally and with force. The force of government. Unless we stop listening to people like her, who are from Satan, we will be lulled into an effeminate collaboration with evil, even as we pretend to fight it, 
And as the decades and years go by, we find we are slaves to evil because we did not organize to oppose it forcefully. May God forbid, and may God open the ears of everyone who needs to hear to see into the wicked and corrupt character of this poser and subversive, falsely called Dr. Jean Kagia. They are not mentioned in this bill at all. Then I looked at the professional healthcare providers. This bill surprising enough says that the professional health providers are midwives, are clinic officers, and registered nurses. There is no mention of the doctors at the introduction. And if you are going to go through Article 43, which talks about every person has a right to the highest attainable standard of, uh, of health care, including reproductive health, surely a doctor of the highest uh, qualification must be included. Even when you come to the termination of pregnancy, according to Article 26, the person who is supposed to be trained is not just trained for two, three days. We believe that they must have the skills of decision making and looking after this particular person in terms of service. Why? Because Article 26 one says that everybody has the right to life. And two, that life started conception. So if anybody is going to kill that baby, they must have the highest standard of decision making and, um, and be able to do it in the best possible way. That way you need the highest qualified person. When you look at the healthcare provider, this healthcare provider, I'm just about to finish, Mr. Chairman. This healthcare provider because is part of, um, has uh, some regulatory bodies which look into the care of uh, the kind of medical care they provide. Now, to say that they are going to be regulated by the court, given penalties or very high penalties, is going to affect our care in this particular country. Welcome to this Cradles of Life documentary. My name is Wavene Wanyasa. Just to introduce you to what Cradles of Life is, we are a pro-life organization infiltrating Africa and hopefully all over the world with a message of the unborn, speaking up for the unborn and looking at what it is that most pro-lifers have gone through the challenges and the hard things that they've had to go through and obstacles. And at the end of the day, what are the achievements? So this is the first documentary, courtesy of Cradles of Life, to just show you what pro-life is doing right here in East Africa. My name is Wavinia Wanyasa, and today we're joined with a special guest, Dr. Jean Kagye, to my left. And of course, my colleague on the right, King Ori. Karibu sana, Daktari. Uh, thank you very much, Wavinia, for inviting me to this uh, uh, discussion. It's amazing. Yes. It's very good to have you. I've known you for some time. In fact, for the longest time. Yes. On and off doing interviews. Yes. But it's always great to have you. So we just want to start by highlighting your journey. Yes. How did you start? Because we know that you're a pioneer of this pro-life movement here in Kenya. How did you start and when did you start? This is a very, very long journey. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad I've interacted with you from time to time. Mm -hmm. I started appreciating children. Mm -hmm. Maybe when I was in primary school, okay. I remember one I, I interacted with a bath when my mother, who was having a baby, wow. we had gone to the shamba, came back, uh -huh. and she asked me, to get out, the next thing I had a baby cry. Hiya. And then she tells me, come with a karai so that we can put something. Wow. So I took the placenta and threw it away. She told me I had to bury it. Okay. And I started having that idea of appreciating new life. Mm. I even shouted the name of the baby and I was told you don't name babies. Ah. So that kind of brought the idea of a new life, mm -hmm. a new person. Mm -hmm. And I started thinking about new life. Mm -hmm. Then, of course, I went to school, I went to high school, and when I was in the school, I felt called to be a doctor. Mm -hmm. Again, I was unwell. Okay. 
Okay. I went to a hospital. Mm -hmm. And there was this doctor who was so nasty and so bad. Mm. I had just become God born again when I was in form two. Okay. And so I told God, give me a chance. Mm -hmm. I will want to become a doctor mm -hmm. and uh, do a better job than this one. Mm -hmm. So all along, as I now I finished my own levels, those days were doing A levels. Mm -hmm. I went for my A levels, that was at Kenya High School. Mm -hmm. Again, I had to fight to be allowed to do subjects mm -hmm. that would make me do medicine. Mm -hmm. So I just told them I wanted to do physics, chemistry, uh, zoology and maths, subsid maths. And I told them why zoology? I said, because I want to do human medicine. Okay. I was quite clear mm. of that. Wow. So then I did my medicine. I finished. Mm -hmm. I finished in 75. Mm -hmm. Being a Christian, I was still having this inclination to life and obstetrics, what you do with the newborns. Okay, all right. Um, so when I finished, I went to do my postgraduate. Mm -hmm. And my postgraduate had to be in gynecology. Again, where I'm going to help people bring new life, new life into right. the world. Mm -hmm. And one day, mm -hmm. over 24 hours, mm -hmm. I was on emergency cover at Kenyatta National Hospital mm -hmm. and had to deal with 40 women and girls wow. who had either had abortions or miscarriages. Good Lord. And when I looked at each one of them as they were going like a conveyor belt, uh, they, they, they were feeling, you could see hopelessness, tears. They were all weeping. Yeah. And I told God, if you give me an opportunity, mm. wow. I will make sure that we stop this issue of abortion. Mm. Mm -hmm. When I finished my postgraduate and I went on with my life, mm -hmm. and then, one time, as I was, I said I was a Christ, I'm a Christian. Mm -hmm. During my quiet time, I read uh, Mark chapter 14. Mm -hmm. Remember Mary who poured expensive oil on Jesus? Mm -hmm. So I was reading that story, mm -hmm. and Judas was very annoyed mm -hmm. because of this wastage. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said, leave her alone. She has done what she could yes. in preparing my body for burial. Mm -hmm. But what I got was, she has done the best she can. She can and right. again, the Lord now talks and says to me, you are in gynecology. Mm. You are a gynecologist. Mm. You see all these abortions. Mm. Have you done what you could? Mm. Or are you just quiet? Mm -hmm. And of course, I repent mm -hmm. and think of how now to go back and uh, think we should start. It's a long story, as I said. Mm. And that led me now to even having a doctor's fellowship. Because if you are one person, talking of a message people think you're just a crazy girl mm -hmm. so i thought i needed a group of people mm -hmm. where we can have a forum mm -hmm. and get a voice mm -hmm. so and and i became the chair of the christian doctors fellowship mm -hmm. for quite a number of years mm -hmm. while i was the chair mm -hmm. i was invited to a meeting by crisis pregnancy ministries mm -hmm. which is a ministry of youth for christ mm -hmm. uh, that talks about after girls who have gone through crisis pregnancies mm -hmm. and they had asked one major question suppose somebody wanted abortion legalized in kenya mm -hmm. this is now the year 2000 mm -hmm. would you what would we do as christians mm -hmm. we were both the protestants catholics everybody and we had a very nice meeting and we said i put up my head and said mm -hmm. we as christian doctors have done something Okay. What had you done? Mm -hmm. We had written one article, okay, which said, mm -hmm. "Kill me at three at uh, ten weeks in my mother's womb. I'm an abortion. Kill me at three months after birth. Wow, it is death." Mm -hmm. We had put that article in the paper, so I, I'm proud saying we have done something. Mm -hmm. uh, I knew this was only true. <laughs> But it was something. It was something. So yes. they said, now you people have done a lot. Mm -hmm. Can you cheer this uh, group? Mm -hmm. So we were given the money to start a task force to start um, something which is pro-life mm -hmm. in this country. Mm -hmm. So we looked at it and we had several meetings that were churches and para church organizations. Mm -hmm. So we thought, why don't we start uh, an organization that's not going to look like political. Mm -hmm. Let's go over to like pro life it is, some people fight each other. Mm -hmm. So we said, why don't you look for a name? So we look for the name Protecting Life. Mm -hmm. Because we want to protect life. Yes, yes. From yes. conception mm -hmm. until natural mm -hmm. uh, death, mm -hmm. according to God's command, mm -hmm. because we are Christians. Mm -hmm. So we started that. Mm -hmm. And as we are doing our paperwork, mm -hmm. 
the, you get to constitutional review mm. in Kenya. Mm -hmm. Now we got on the ground, we are meeting an organization, we are going to say no, don't bring abortion into our constitution. Mm -hmm. So we even got uh, to do quite a lot of work in, um, in being uh, uh, advising the churches mm. uh, on issues of life. Mm -hmm. So we started that one. Initially, it was a ministry of the Christian Doctors Fellowship mm -hmm. because we are not registered. But we realized that we had a challenge in that people don't, a doctor's organization, nobody was to support them, mm. even financially, mm. because these doctors are rich, mm -hmm. which I don't think is true. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's actually what they say. So yes. eventually now we, we thought of doing a registered trust. Okay. Again, so protecting life movement mm -hmm. trust is an organization of organizations. Okay, okay. Of uh, those who are pro-life organizations, mm. those who believe that can protect life. Mm -hmm. It is made up of churches, mm -hmm. and some of the founding churches mm -hmm. who are like Nairobi Chapel, mm -hmm. Nairobi Baptist oh, Church, okay. and, and uh, there are many, and then the Christian organizations, mm -hmm. like the Christian Lawyers, mm -hmm. Christian Doctors Fellowship. Mm -hmm. So we have a group of all this organization, Christian media, mm. and uh, so we formed this organization, mm -hmm. which is an organization mm. of uh, organizations mm -hmm. which are pro-life. Okay. If, if you were not a Christian, based on what you had seen mm -hmm. as an obstetrician gynecologist, would you still have looked for a way to fight for life? Is it just a Christian thing or is it just something that is human? First of all, as a doctor, mm -hmm. we take a oath, mm -hmm. Hippocratic oath, yes. which has been modified many times, mm -hmm. which says that you shouldn't take life, and we are trained to save life. Mm -hmm. But when you look at the issue of abortion and destruction of life, mm -hmm. it's also a very big business. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have a conscience and want to make money, mm -hmm. and uh, you love mammon, you, know, you can't have two gods, mammon and God, mm -hmm. then you'll be more inclined mm -hmm. to make that money. You can even justify. Mm. That is, you know, I've got to look after my children. Oh, no. Who God has given me. I need to live in a better suburb. Mm. You know, things like that. I mean, as a doctor, you should live well. Mm. So you can easily uh, use your con dampen your conscience. Wow. And end up not studying for life. Mm. And that is why I think as a Christian, mm. you find yourself different. Mm -hmm. Because you are at the command of God yes. when you are practicing medicine. Mm. In other words, whatever you do, mm. is it what God has called you to do? Mm -hmm. If it is protection of life, mm -hmm. are you going to protect it? Mm. Are you going to justify killing mm. in the name of whatever it is? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can't mm. because God is the one who is guiding your life. That's true. So I don't know whether I would really become a pro-lifer if I'm not a Christian. Mm. <laughs> no, so I know I'm an against a pro-life. Yes, a pro, I would. I, I don't know whether one can make a good pro-lifer if you are not a Christian. Okay, with all the forces that are there, okay. it's a doctor. Yeah, so you know, like you know, you have an, a gynecologist delivering a baby in one room, and killing in the other room. We've had cases of that in the U.S. So one room, a baby is being delivered. The other room, a baby is being killed. So the conscience issue. That's the question. Yeah, but you see, the Bible is very clear mm. that some people have shipwrecked their conscience. Yes. And if your conscience is shipwrecked, mm. it means that it no longer bothers you. It can only be active if you have God mm, okay. guiding your conscience. Must be. So if I feel like if a girl comes in, mm -hmm. she says, I don't have school fees, I've been thrown out by a, uh, uh, my boyfriend, my parents will kill me, mm -hmm. please assist me. Mm -hmm. I can justify mm. that I'm actually helping her because I don't want her to kill herself. Good. I don't want her to suffer. Mm -hmm. And therefore, as a doctor, I'm giving medical care. By you get the by portion, yeah, I'm not I killing, yeah. I'm helping her. Uh -huh. I'm helping, I'm giving service to help her. But you see, if you are a believer, mm -hmm. you will know that before God formed that baby in the mother's womb, right. he knew that child okay. and appointed that child to be somebody. Mm -hmm. And therefore, you are going to protect that child mm -hmm. at every stage mm -hmm. from conception. Mm -hmm. But you need God for you to get that, that coin. Conscience and so that, that conscience right. has mm. to be uh, uh, guided by God. Mm -hmm. And that's why it will be very difficult for somebody who doesn't have a godly conscience 
not to give in, but if a lot of money comes around, surely. Yeah. Why wouldn't you give the money? And you always testify, they came to me, they are helping me. I've had people say, it's like if you put a girl, a girl is up at uh, KICC, tallest, uh, tall building, and she says, she's saying, if you don't abort me, I'm going to jump out and die. And you say, surely, you can't let her die. You better abort her. But you see, you have not said, I can go where she is. I can bring her down. Her problem, her, me, her pre pregnancy is not a medical issue. Mm -hmm. It is a social so, issue so. because she's rejected. Yes. And therefore, what I'm going to do is bring her down and tell her how do we sort out the social problem. Yes. And that is where now we have a social solution yes. through protecting life movement right. of getting a shelter, mm -hmm. which is a social solution mm -hmm. to this social problem. Uh -huh. But you'd not go that far mm -hmm. because you don't appreciate that life as God-given life mm -hmm. and life that has value. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, so your conscience is shipwrecked. It's shipwrecked at that point. According to the Bible. Wow. And at the end of the day, it's really not about, it's really not about the women, really. Let's just say, per se, uh, yeah. you know, abortion, the whole industry. It's not about the women either. People think it's about saving the woman, women, giving them safe abortions and everything. But it's more or less about the pocket. You know, you have brought up a very interesting concept, which is not a concept, which is not a correct concept. Mm -hmm. I know it's used by WHO. Mm -hmm. I'm a doctor, I'm a gynecologist. And I go through some of their writings and all. But I don't believe any, everything they say. Mm, okay. As a believer, mm -hmm. you ask yourself, is there anything like a safe abortion? There's nothing like a safe abortion. Because they are going to talk about safe abortion in terms of the environment mm -hmm. and the person who is doing it. Mm -hmm. So as long as you kill that baby in a normal environment, we carried out by the right person, this is safe. Mm -hmm. But I may ask you, Avinia, yeah. is that a, a safe procedure for the baby? No. It's you have killing. killed the baby. You've so killed. it can't be safe for the baby. Yeah, yeah. If you go on documented results, mm -hmm. you'll find out even for the girl who is pregnant, it is not safe. It isn't. She has got emotional complications, mm -hmm. can get physical uh, complications, mm -hmm. even in the best of the hands. Mm -hmm. She can have uh, psychological complications, mm -hmm. spiritual com uh, complications. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about safe abortion, mm -hmm. you are at two different levels. Mm -hmm. This person who is on the world level mm -hmm. is thinking about how to kill safely. Sanitize And I keep on asking, yeah. like now we have a lot of cases of uh, sexual assault mm. and rape. Thank you, yeah. Should we go back and say, let us now organize, mm. because there's so much of rape. Yeah. Why don't we organize and make it to have safe. women illegally uh, organized so yes. that they can be raped safely raped. and uh, in uh, the right it's environment. Absurd. It's absurd, yeah. Well, the right yes. person. Uh, the right yes. person. Yes, you know. So. so the, it's a moral issue. It's a moral issue. It's a moral issue. issue. Yes. So you cannot ki do legalize morality, mm -hmm. immorality, and call it right. Mm -hmm. And legalizing something which is wrong doesn't make it right. Never ever. That's Particularly true. in the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. No. Just a quick one on the point you say that um, the, if it is done by the right person, uh, the right place. Yeah. You see what they are sanitizing is the person. Sanitization. Yeah. And the right environment. The environment. The environment. Yes. Exactly. Who is this right person to do this abortion? Who is this that is authorized? Mm. The, the, okay. That you were brought up, mm. you brought up uh, the constitution. Mm. Let's look at Article 26. Yeah. Point one, one says that every person has, has a right, right to, to life. life. Yes. So that's a basic human right. Mm -hmm. Yes. You have basic human life, you have a right to life. Mm -hmm. Number two, that the life okay. of a person starts at, at conception. Right. Yes. So it means as long as one is conceived, you can they have right to that life. Mm -hmm. That is the number three is how you shouldn't take life just uh, uh, careless. Maybe you can read it for uh, us. Yes, and and this one I have an issue with, and I think most people yes. also have an issue with. A person shall not be deprived of life intentionally, except to the extent authorized by this constitution or other written law yeah you see mm -hmm. that uh, even for we bring that bit of other yeah. written law, law. yes uh, but that is uh, we can discuss that mm -hmm. so when you come to the fourth one mm -hmm. 
So in other words, you know, people talk about capital punishment and all that, taking that life mm -hmm. uh, 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 without any good reason. Mm -hmm. But when you come to the fourth one, mm -hmm. which he's uh, talking about, mm -hmm. is that abortion is not permitted except yes. mm. in the opinion of, of, a, trained of a trained health professional, professional that it is an emergency or if there's a danger of somebody's life and health or written uh, as a written another, in another, written, in another written role yes let's go back now i'll mm. talk like a doctor mm. uh, what is an opinion mm -hmm. is a doctor mm -hmm. if you come to me uh, and you wanted my opinion on your health there are basic things that i've got to do to get you an opinion one i've got to take your history mm -hmm. oh doctor i have been having diarrhea for three days mm -hmm. yes i have to ask you what had you eaten mm -hmm. how had you drank mm -hmm. did you have fever did you was it watery like the cholera one mm -hmm. you know so i've got to take that history mm -hmm. then i've got to examine you mm -hmm. And I want to say, say you are dehydrated, you have to pain in the tummy and all that. A history and examination should give me an impression of a diagnosis in 80% of the cases. In some cases, I need extra help where I may do investigations. Do I check your stool? Do I check your blood? Do I do an ultrasound? All those things that I need. Mm -hmm. When I do the history, mm -hmm. the examination, mm -hmm. and the supporting investigations, mm -hmm. I come up with an opinion. Mm -hmm. And then I'll tell you, this is food poisoning. Mm -hmm. And this is the treatment that you need. Mm -hmm. So I've given the medical opinion. Mm -hmm. So in the same way, when you come to abortion, mm -hmm. somebody cannot come and tell you, because my husband threw me out, or mm -hmm. my boyfriend, or my parents, mm -hmm. I want to come for an abortion. Mm -hmm. That means it is illegal mm -hmm. in as far as the constitution is concerned mm -hmm. because it's not your opinion that matters, mm -hmm. it is my opinion. So I should be able to take your story, examine you, and uh, do investigations, find out yes, actually, you have missed your periods for three months. I examine you, yeah, this uterus feels like it's a pregnancy of three months. Uh, I check, uh, do an ultrasound, confirm even the heart is beating, and then I come back to you. And I see, as far as I'm concerned, my opinion is that your pregnancy is okay. Mm -hmm. But you have a social problem. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to think in terms of the opinion is this pregnancy is okay. Mm -hmm. It is the social problem you have Around that you. is a problem. Mm -hmm. So I cannot say that you need an abortion mm -hmm. for a social reason. Mm -hmm. I should look for a social solution mm -hmm. or recommend a social solution mm -hmm. in that case. Mm -hmm. Let's look at the opposite of that. Mm -hmm. Suppose you come to me and you are pregnant. You tell me, doctor, my face is swollen. I can hardly breathe. I'm not passing urine. I'm having all these things. And uh, I am seven months pregnant or six months pregnant or whatever. Again, I take the history. I examine you. I confirm you're actually pregnant. I even do investigations, but I discover maybe your blood pressure is so high. Mm -hmm. You are almost at the point of getting what you call eclampsia, where you have feet mm -hmm. and where you can die. Mm -hmm. I'm going to look at you, do the investigation, I'm going to sit you down and tell you, yes, you have a pregnancy. Your pregnancy is uh, going on well, but your body is in danger. Mm -hmm. And if you die, you and the baby are likely to die. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I'm recommending that we deliver you. Okay. Deliver. We remove this baby. Deliver. 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 You remove this word. baby. Uh -huh. One of the things that I'm going to do is look at how far in your pregnancy. You are, right? You are. Mm -hmm. My intention is not to kill the baby. Mm -hmm. It is a situation where mm -hmm. two could easily die. Okay. But you may end up with one die. But your intention is to remove that baby, that baby for the mother to live. We have people who are called neonatologists mm -hmm. who look after those small babies. Well, yeah, so right. I am going to make sure that that's the environment where I am have such a service so that I give the baby to those people so that they examine, they, they look after the little baby. Mm -hmm. and some of us have I give the baby even half a kilo yeah, or yeah, more, depending. Yeah. But my intention is not to kill that baby. Mm -hmm. My intention is to save that, that life means. and save your life. Yes. That, by the way, is different mm -hmm. from where you have decided mm -hmm. that there's no reason but two of these people could live. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to deliberately kill one. Imagine. And in the process, 
I could easily kill the other one. Mm -hmm. So it's a situation where you have two who could have lived, mm -hmm. but have killed one and possibly maimed or killed the second one. Mm -hmm. You see the two. I see the scenario. So the opinion when it comes to that part of the constitution is that abortion on demand or on request is actually illegal mm -hmm. in Kenya. Mm -hmm. Now, I bet. Well. And, and we have battled this one. We have actually been in a meeting, mm -hmm. one of the meetings with, with the Minister of Health. And we came with that conclusion mm. that abortion on demand or on request is illegal in Kenya. Right. That's well, why you bring the word opinion. Opinion. Who is this trained person mm. who should do it? Mm. If you go to Article 43, you go to Article 43, it talks about everybody has a right to the highest standard of healthcare services, mm -hmm. including reproductive health care. You have a right to the highest standard, attainable, mm -hmm. highest mm -hmm. attainable. Yeah. So again, if it is my right to have the highest attainable, the opinion of killing that baby should come from the highest attainable um, training of that particular person. That means it's not just training somebody to go and kill a baby because they can give a tablet or they can uh, do an MVA. It is, is they, do they have the highest opinion in terms of decision making? Mm -hmm. So we Are they qualified enough to make a decision mm -hmm. that this baby actually needs to be delivered? Yeah, mm -hmm. this baby, this pregnancy needs to be terminated. Mm -hmm. Is it the highest opinion? And some people will argue, uh, in a developing country like ours, we don't have uh, people, uh, we don't have access, to, not everybody has access to a gynecologist. Mm. But there's something which is called referral and consultation. If you are a junior doctor somewhere, and unless it's an emergency where the person is dying, the termination is not going to be an emergency, and abortion is not going to be an emergency, you can call another gynecologist in the area and ask and consult. If you think this baby is going to come in very premature, you'll do the best, you lower the blood pressure and quickly transfer that person to where they can be delivered in the right way. You get my point? Mm -hmm. So if you're going to have Article 43 mm -hmm. coming out and being right for the right of that person, mm -hmm. the opinion mm -hmm. has to come from the highest opinion in decision making and in the service that they are going to give mm -hmm. the, during the procedure. Wow. That means that the way people think, you just take a few clinical officers or take a few nurses, give them a two-week uh, uh, training in how to do an abortion, that you are doing the right thing. According to the constitution, you are denying that person the right of good decision making. Mm. And if they came, they went to somebody who said, but you know, that decision was not right. You can actually take somebody to court mm -hmm. and say, you killed my baby. I think, did you consult somebody else? And you'll be asked, were you the highest person? No. Mm -hmm. Did you refer to somebody? No. So you can actually, a healthcare provider mm -hmm. can actually be charged in a court of law mm -hmm. for breaking that because they did not seek the highest mm -hmm. according to the constitution. Mm -hmm. The other thing that you find, uh, which is uh, going on around, is that you get pharmacists being trained Dispensing. how they can dis no they, they can even dispense the medicine. The medicines, yeah. You know, there's a case which was somewhere in Western Kenya mm. where a pharmacist gave uh, a girl who was seven months pregnant um, medicine, and she ended up dying. Yes, because again, that. So when you look at from the healthcare prof uh, prof uh, uh, providers' uh, qualification. A pharmacist is not a healthcare provider. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. He dispenses the medicine that are written by a healthcare, mm -hmm. healthcare provider. Mm -hmm. So you cannot give him that responsibility mm -hmm. of giving an opinion mm -hmm. and treating, mm -hmm. giving treatment mm -hmm. for an abortion. Mm -hmm. It's again a constitutional. And, and you know, no, and it's unconstitutional. Mm -hmm. So if you go back to our laws, mm -hmm. People are doing a lot of illegal things. And when we're looking at this Article 26, and I remember a lot of people, especially the church, were against it because of the loopholes that have been yes. created. For example, that other written law. Which one? We're and looking you at... See, yes, you see now, this mm -hmm. is now what you can look at right now. Mm -hmm. 
You see, we have just been discussing the productive health bill. Kihika, right, right. Yes, yes. by Honorable Susan Kihika. Mm. That could be another written, written law. Written law. It's so if you bring, law. yes. So if you bring in that every, let's say, you take an adolescent mm -hmm. between nine, eighteen years, according to the reproductive health bill, mm. and you go to the section of. Um, a termination of pregnancy. Mm. This person is supposed to have an unjudgmental, uh, should be cancelled, should make a decision confidentially mm -hmm. wow. without uh, other people knowing. Involved, yeah, right? without yes. parent involvement. Mm. So what are you saying? Mm. This person who in Kenya mm -hmm. cannot be allowed to vote. Mm -hmm. This person in Kenya who cannot be allowed to drive. Mm. This person who in Kenya cannot sign a consent form to have an appendix removed. Look at that. Because they are not able to understand. Yes. This person in Kenya who, if she came to me mm -hmm. pregnant mm -hmm. at 16 mm -hmm. and is living with a, uh, another age, another 17, mm -hmm. I don't know whether they are married or what they are, and they have made a baby and they are living together, and this baby needs to be delivered by cesarean, mm -hmm. do you know none of them can sign? Wow. No, we'd have to have an adult. Yes. Because according to the laws, they cannot understand. Yes. Now, when you come and tell me that according to the reproductive health bill, they should be able to make a decision on, reprodu on reproductive health care services, which includes abortion mm -hmm. and uh, contraceptives, mm -hmm. it's a double talk. Mm. And if you now pass this, reproductive health bill mm -hmm. it can fit in very well in the constitution as they are the written the law written law exactly yeah. so that's right. why you find people are at war with it mm -hmm. because you're bringing in abortion mm -hmm. you're bringing contraceptives for the young people mm -hmm. for the adolescents mm -hmm. through the back door yes okay what about what you just said that you give your opinion based on history exactly and you have already said there is no even room for termination exactly you can deliver a baby and both live yes because your oath is to save life yes. okay. uh -huh. now the constitution says healthcare provider uh. it is not categorically clear uh -huh. you yeah. see a community health worker who is trained in a week is he not a healthcare provider but then yes. you don't take one article and work on it alone and no. that's why you have to tie it up with us 43, 43. Yes. Mm -hmm. very, because very 43 important. is talking about the highest yes the highest highest it means you are not going for the lowest mm. you're not going for the community mm. this yes is the person if he gives the opinion there mm. is no and if they went like to a court of law court, huh? yeah. yes like a supreme court yeah. and if you went to court mm -hmm. you can say yes According to this, this was the correct decision. Mm -hmm. And by the way, mm -hmm. if you take such courses, cases to court, you have opinions of other consultants, mm -hmm. independent people, to come and say, was it right to have had this baby terminated? Mm. Okay. Yes. Okay. Was the decision right? Mm. So we have to protect mm -hmm. our healthcare providers also. Because if somebody comes, particularly the NGOs, which are pushing for the so-called uh, safe abortion, Reproductive health, if yeah. they come, mm -hmm. they do not say, we, we see they are going to put our health care providers into trouble. Because if somebody is taken to court, mm -hmm. it is them going to court, mm -hmm. it is them going to committee, mm -hmm. it is their family suffering. Mm -hmm. So people have to understand up to the grassroots mm -hmm. that what the constitution is saying mm -hmm. must be uh, followed. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that, Terry, that we need to do something about the Constitution, Article 26? Because these NGOs that you're mentioning, I personally have, you know, come across a situation where a young girl was asking a certain organization, again, I will not mention names, uh, whether it was legal in Kenya, you know. And I remember fighting back and forth and telling them, trying to pull them out of that page and pull them out of thinking of abortion by telling them it's not legal. But you know what? they say are you sure it's not legal in kenya read article 26. yeah so but you see article 26 mm -hmm. if you go through the way i've explained yes the opinion mm -hmm. who gave the opinion mm -hmm. is it by a trained person mm -hmm. what kind of training mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In, t in conjunction with the uh, uh, article 43 mm -hmm. and then you see that opinion is the do or healthcare provider's opinion mm -hmm. not your opinion mm -hmm. and that's why i say it mm -hmm. Abortion on demand or on request mm -hmm. is illegal in Kenya. Mm -hmm. There have been quite a bit of fighting about a document which was made, standards and guidelines of uh, 
reducing maternal mortality in Kenya, mm -hmm. they were in court and all that. Mm -hmm. But if you go to that book, that book list, go to page number 10, mm -hmm. it is clearly states that abortion on demand and on request is not allowed by the position of Kenya. Mm -hmm. And that has been made through the Ministry of Health. Mm -hmm. So even if somebody comes with another document where they want to introduce, mm -hmm. we have all these things and it should be looked at. Mm -hmm. So I think what we need is to explain to the people, mm -hmm. uh, trained people, mm -hmm. to understand the laws. Mm -hmm. Because somebody will come with an NGO, mm -hmm. they, they, have a, they, they have another motive, mm -hmm. maybe population control. Of course. Kill as many as people yes, as you can, yes, there are too know. many. Yeah. Or you, the money you are getting from that NGO. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter even if I twist the information. Mm -hmm. And by the way, to come to that conclusion mm. of abortion is not uh, on demand. Mm. We had doctors mm -hmm. from various uh, institutions. We had people, we had lawyers. We had NGOs. We made, we came through that. I was in that meeting. Mm -hmm. So it was made by people who wrestled with it and came with that conclusion. Mm -hmm. So anybody who will cheat you mm -hmm. that abortion on demand on request is okay in Kenya, mm -hmm. they're telling you a lie. Mm -hmm. I'd like to mention this organization. I think you all know it, Marriage Stops. Yes. Marriage Stops have been carrying out abortions day in, but it's known. day out. It's something that is known. Why are they not being stopped? That's the question. And in your battle, you know, through the journey, I think those are some of the people that you tried to um, ensure perhaps that they're off the scene. Why is it such a hard thing to get them out? Let me go back to how Marriage Stops started. Mm -hmm. Marriage Stops was started in the UK mm -hmm. when abortion was illegal. Mm -hmm. Abortion was legalized in the UK in 1967. Mm -hmm. But there was uh, this Marriage Stops lady, who was a doctor, mm -hmm. had to find a way of to do abortions mm -hmm. uh, against the law. Okay. And what did she do? She coined a phrase mm -hmm. called menstrual regulation. So if a woman went to her clinic and she's going for an abortion, all to be written is MR, menstrual regulation. Do you regulate the menstrual when someone is pregnant? Menstruation is before you are pregnant. Yeah. But that she coined. Wow. Yeah? Uh -huh. So whenever they go, they talk about menstrual regulation. Uh -huh. Two, uh -huh. they also is taken to be a reproductive health provider mm -hmm. services mm -hmm. they'll give uh, contraceptives mm -hmm. they'll give uh, a few babies whom they don't want to sleep through their hands will be delivered here people have delivered in marriage stops but uh, if you went to take their documents and find out about abortion mm -hmm. if you see the name mar mm -hmm. what would you do oh. mm -hmm. I, I remember when we had the uh, those uh, babies who are thrown around Nairobi South Beach yeah. near ICC. ICC, ICC. I was the there. River. Oh no. Yeah, by Imagine. the way, there were 50 babies I counted. Oh, just, just, just. They were there. And we buried them in Langata mm. uh, later. And some of them were very big. Mm -hmm. And we had documents. Mm -hmm. We could show. Mm -hmm. So, coming to why are they stopped? You know, if you go to a court of law, mm -hmm. you go to have a way of proving that these people mm -hmm. are doing it. Mm -hmm. Uh, you got to have somebody who will give a uh, testimony mm -hmm. that they were actually were aborted there, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. So we need someone who can come with that point. Mm -hmm. Two, mm -hmm. I think when you look at um, their documents, you can see that they are abortion providers. Mm -hmm. But because it is illegal here, you got to come up with evidence. It was, uh, uh, when was it? When the, the citizen go, mm -hmm. um, they, they, they took the marriage stops to the medical board. Yes. Mm -hmm. And actually action was taken. Mm -hmm. It was told to stop carrying out abortion. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we are going to be uh, uh, to be monitored very closely. Mm -hmm. In fact, at the end of it all, they were told you can only do post-abortion care. Mm -hmm. But post-abortion care means if you have had an ab you are in the face of having an abortion or you have had an abortion, somebody can look after you. But you shouldn't initiate the abortion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So anybody who goes there can be done that. Mm -hmm. Now, it will be very difficult unless you get somebody mm -hmm. who will say, uh, this one, they actually aborted me. Mm -hmm. Then you say, it was not a post-abortion care. Mm -hmm. It was an abortion care. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even if you did that, 
the 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 also the the systems that we have uh -huh. of uh, actually going to court is the the whole system which is failed uh -huh. where you you do not have um, uh, the law enforcers mm -hmm. are also not in it. Mm -hmm. They are not keen. Mm -hmm. Maybe they are not pro life. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Maybe yeah. they are not pro life, and therefore they, mm -hmm. they, they may give that. But unless you have proper concrete information, mm -hmm. and then you end up with a judge who is also going to agree with the following the law clearly. Mm -hmm. You'll find that these cases will go in and out. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember still very, very sadly of a, a lady who I went to school with a long time ago and she had her daughter aborted by a doctor and all the evidence was there it, everything was there and you could see how she went out with that of course she died oh. but unfortunately mm -hmm. the person was even a rage he got practically sent it I mean, even a common person could see it definitely this was done. Mm -hmm. So, if it is, it's not just a question of saying take marriage stop support. Mm -mm. Do you have evidence to show that they did this particular meaning? They are registered to give healthcare, reproductive healthcare services. So, it needs to, someone to know, dissect what care have they given. Mm -hmm. If they give the wrong care, if they give post abortion care, that's allowed because anybody who comes with post abortion complications should be given the care. Mm -hmm. I even would give them care. It doesn't bother me whether they aborted themselves or somebody aborted them. As long as they need post abortion care, I have an obligation to give because I want to save that life, which could die out of whatever they had done. Mm -hmm. So that is the kind of thing which is constitutional for them to do and which is according to the guidelines. Mm -hmm. But when you bring the issue of the actual abortion, mm -hmm. that's a different matter which needs uh, a bit more collaboration between all the different. But it's known, it's an organization that um, propagates abortion mm -hmm. all over. Before, before abortion was legalized in the U.S., mm -hmm. U.S. abortion was legalized in 1973. Mm -hmm. we, we read that some women would go from, from uh, U.S. To and state. travel to, to U.K. Mm -hmm. initially oh. before the, the legalization of abortion okay. and go through a mem an MR, mm, menstrual regression. What they'd call yeah, that. Yeah, and Whoa. she goes back. Good so Lord. it's not just about marriage. So what is the background? Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And if that is written in the document, mm -hmm. what is MR? Mm, Maybe you're sure telling somebody who's not a doctor, who's a MR. Mm. Most of the doctors don't even know there's an MR. Good Lord. Most of the, they don't know that history. Mm. So it's very important. Maybe just again to ask, uh, yeah, as a doctor, you know when if I pick a gun and shoot uh, Wavinya here, mm. uh, that is a crime yeah. in, in Kenya. Mm. And you find uh, somebody from the highest cadder, which is a physician, the highest point of uh, a professional, terminates or kills the baby. Mm. Is it the same? Because uh, we have agreed and we can all agree uh, that life starts at Conception. Conception. Right. That's why you, you were saying in your the initial assessment or opinion, you look at history, how long has the pregnancy been, what risks are there, and you have said categorically, yeah, there is no room or mm. there is no evidence that you can, you have to terminate mm. the, yeah. the word terminate. The, 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 the key question is, uh, there is a lot of wordings mm. that has been put across to hide the evil, mm, mm. to hide the killing, mm. to hide the murders. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there is, a, you, you know, you are looking at it from the point of view of a Christian. Yes. To a Christian, anything that is going to kill, in fact, is one of the commandments, do not kill. Yes. Mm. So anybody taking that life is killing. Mm -hmm. But to a person who doesn't believe in that law, is it killing? Is giving health care service according to them yes so there, there, there's, the there's what has been the biggest debate recently yeah. during internationally during mm. this covid time mm. 
where you see statements written, abortion is health care. Health, can you imagine? So they, 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 they want the even to go a little bit further mm. and say, let us make it easier. Mm. And because a person cannot go to the doctor, you come up with what they call do it yourself. Mm. Can you post abortion pills to somebody? Do the post. So you, you have two different kingdoms. Mm. If you have the kingdom of God, mm. it is at so its known rules and standards. Mm -hmm. If you have the kingdom of Satan mm -hmm. in the world, mm -hmm. it has different rules and different games to play. Mm -hmm. And therefore, you cannot use the same understanding in both. Mm -hmm. The kingdom of God will say it is killing. Mm -hmm. And therefore, you have to do everything to save that life. Mm -hmm. The kingdom of Satan in the world is that you are giving health care mm -hmm. provision. Mm -hmm. You are assisting this particular person who would have killed themselves. Mm -hmm. So kill the other one in the process. Mm -hmm. Which so, you agree yes, so, so, a doctor that it is very wrong. Yeah, but wrong but but this person is a doctor. But are they do they have the values of the kingdom of God? Okay. As long as they don't have, yeah. they're not bound by it. Mm -hmm. They can kill left, right, and center. Mm. They can post medicine for people to take to a boat. They can take a person and get a fee. They have aborted the person. Mm -hmm. That person, we hope they don't, don't die. Mm. But as long as the baby dies, they've done their part. Because their values and their convictions are not within the conscience. Mm -hmm. You have to understand, mm -hmm. Mr. Kingori, that the kingdom of God values mm. and the kingdom of Satan and the world are so far Parallel. apart. Yeah. It's like the east That's is from the case. west. Mm. And therefore, mm -hmm. you will not expect mm. even for us who are gynecologists, mm -hmm. when we discuss the issue of abortion, you find we are divided. Mm -hmm. And you can never you can never convince somebody who is so bent up on in the world with values mm -hmm. agreeing with you. Mm -hmm. They would have to convert. Mm -hmm. They'd have to know God. Mm -hmm. They'd have to have the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. They'd have to be wanting to go to heaven mm -hmm. and carry out godly values mm -hmm. for them mm -hmm. to change. Mm -hmm. And until they have been done that way, mm -hmm. the Bible says very clearly, mm -hmm. the heart of man is desperately wicked, wicked. above true. all things. Mm -hmm. So how do you tell somebody to be what they are not? Mm -hmm. You only give what you have. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I always tell people, even in discussions, we should not be talking about pro-life uh, pro and pro-choice. Mm -hmm. It's a misnomer. Okay, okay. We should be talking about pro-life pro mm -hmm. and pro-death. That's it. Yeah, that's yeah, true. Yeah, because I'm also a pro-choice. Mm -hmm. I have a choice. Mm -hmm. I can decide not to have a baby or to have a baby. Mm -hmm. Except in very rare cases where one is dead. But in most cases, you can decide whether to have a baby or not. The next thing is, once a baby is born, I become a pro-choice. This baby must not be killed. Some both are pro-life and pro-choice. But the person who decides that that baby must be killed is not a pro-choice. It's a pro death. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they've got to understand that mm -hmm. because their decision is to kill. Mm -hmm. Why is it a pro death? Because the choice you are making is a selfish choice, mm -hmm. whatever reason. Mm -hmm. This baby is not part of you. Mm -hmm. It's not an appendix, it's not a leg. Mm -hmm. It's a whole human being. Mm -hmm. You have had been given the privilege by God to house that human being mm -hmm. who could even be he has completely different dna from you mm -hmm. could even be a boy and a woman who's mm -hmm. carrying it mm -hmm. could has even got a different blood group mm -hmm. from you mm -hmm. so that person is not part of you it's a different and anatomy they, and That's when, true. yes everything scientifically mm -hmm. is different from you mm -hmm. it's only that you are giving a, a, a housing yes. you're giving a, a accommodation mm -hmm. just as we are that, yes out. just like you are renting in a house mm -hmm. does not mean that now you can kill that person, mm -hmm. take their life, mm -hmm. because you have the privilege of looking after them. Mm -hmm. It's wrong. Mm -hmm. No. And as long as you kill that person, mm -hmm. you are pro-death. Mm -hmm. You are not pro-choice. Mm -hmm. You are pro-death. Mm -hmm. You mentioned something about rape. Let's look at that. Rape, incest. People who come and say, I have been raped. I cannot carry this child to term. As a medical you know, the, the good thing about rape, mm -hmm is that there are very, very few people who get pregnant with rape. Okay. Why would they? They may be at the wrong time of their cycle, mm -hmm. so they may not conceive. Mm -hmm. If you get a hearted people who are living normally, mm -hmm. uh, without any contraception, hearted people, 
within a year only about 80 percent will have achieved a pregnancy there's no problem there's no contraception so one doesn't just conceive very easily mm -hmm. others may be too young to conceive mm -hmm. others may be too old to conceive mm -hmm. others may be using a contraceptive others may be already pregnant mm -hmm. they can't be more pregnant so in fact that the percentage <laughs> of those who are going to be uh, pregnant because of rape is a very very small percentage mm -hmm. less than one percent mm -hmm. now when you look at the issue of rape what has it done to that woman somebody has invaded their most private parts of life mm -hmm. and that is such a, an intrusion that you have traumatized that person for the rest of your life mm -hmm. If they get pregnant, how long are they going to be pregnant? Mm -hmm. Nine, months Nine months at most. Yeah. So you will need to cancel them for the rape and for the pregnancy if they get pregnant. Okay. Because they also come from a society which knows that killing a baby is wrong. Mm -hmm. So you will say, uh, you give them an option with this social issue of an, a rape. Mm -hmm. um, you cancel them so that they carry the baby and if they can't be able to look after the baby, the options like um, you give them for adoption. Mm -hmm. At least you remove that cal that guilt conscience mm -hmm. of having killed the baby. Yes. Why is it important? Because she didn't even happen to this woman. Mm -hmm. And in future, mm -hmm. she wants to have a baby mm -hmm. and she can't. Mm -hmm. She ended up in a mental hospital. Because you'll be remembering, if only I had carried that baby. Really After all, it was part, part of me, mm. so I should have carried it. Mm -hmm. Now, they live with a guilt conscience. Mm. So, you, we say there is no reason mm -hmm. to uh, terminate a pregnancy because it was from rape. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, you find that there are very few people who report the rape. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. they come later, like I was dealing with another girl the other day. She's uh, pregnant, she wanted to come to a rescue center. And somebody says, oh, she was raped. Did you report to anybody? No. But now that she's pregnant, she's also said I was raped by a neighbor. Mm -hmm. You know that kind of thing. So, yeah. so you don't... Yeah. 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 Can never be. No. Yeah, can never it be. is not. Mm -hmm. So you, you wouldn't use it for that way. Mm -hmm. But that person needs to be cancelled. Even to accept themselves having been raped. Mm. Because it's a social problem. It's a social problem, the yes. And, and, and then if you look at the book of Ezekiel, mm -hmm. Ezekiel says very clearly that father should not die because of the sins of, of the, the son. Yes, yes, Or the yes. son, the sins of the father. Mm. Who is uh, the, 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 who has committed the crime here? The you have a rapist, mm. you have the rapist, mm -hmm. you have the baby. Mm -hmm. So why are you killing this innocent baby? Because the father was a murderer mm. or was a rapist. Mm -hmm. So again, we need to look at it. And that's why I'm saying that the kingdom of God's values mm -hmm completely different from the values of the world. Mm -hmm. the, the constitution of Kenya saying killing is wrong. Yes. Yes, and um, I've seen pro-lifers, uh, people who fight against abortion, uh, saying if if killing by a knife is murder and uh, terminating a baby is murder, then if I'll be arrested for shooting you, then that abortion issue should be, be arrested. arrested and it has been categorically termed as extreme radical extremism mm. now it is, as a it pro life is. and as a professional i believe as an obs and gaina you have you are the highest cadre of profession the one should go to on mass matter concerning reproductive health it's my opinion murder is murder okay. as long as you have taken life mm. you have taken it mm. And constitutionally, it is wrong. So yes. what about the and, uh, But you see, you are living in a system. Mm -hmm. A system, if you you, uh, you stabbed somebody and killed them, I'll be committed. you've been committed before sunset. Mm -hmm. there, there's a system. Mm -hmm. But the system that you have of caring for the unborn, mm -hmm. that consciousness of the life of that baby, needs to permeate every part of the system. Okay. Whether it is the parents mm. who will push that girl to abortion, mm. whether it is that man who made her pregnant, mm. who has abandoned her, whether it is that church who is condemning her for being a choir person who got pregnant, mm -hmm. whether it is that policeman where the case has been reported and he's then given a few shillings to hide the case, whether it is the lawyer who will come and have as many opinions as they normally do, mm -hmm. whether it is a magistrate. When you put up all these people together, mm. if they get to a consciousness of a pro-life consciousness, mm -hmm. 
and they can only have a pro-life consciousness mm -hmm. if they first of all appreciate who owns life mm. who is the author of life mm. and this is god right and because you fear god mm -hmm. and you you obey him mm. then whatever decisions you make according to life will be according to his values mm -hmm. but as long as you have a system which is mixed up with all these people we shall not stop having mm. cases got caught with glaring in, uh, evidence mm. and the person is set free mm. to go and make another girl uh, kill another baby through abortion so as long as you appreciate mm -hmm. that in a fallen world mm -hmm. with two systems mm. We should now give you, should give you a lot of zeal mm -hmm. as Christians mm -hmm. to evangelize mm. so that as many people as possible may get to know Christ. Mm -hmm. And not only know Christ, mm. come up with discipling uh, mission so mm -hmm. that they grow in their faith, mm -hmm. so that whatever they are thinking, whatever they do, is what belongs to the kingdom of God. Mm. Until you get to that one, mm. all these other things are going to be around you. Mm. Okay. How many people are even stabbed? Yeah. And they, they were caught it actually is. stabbing. Yeah. And eventually they yeah. caught, they, they are cleared. It was mass slaughter. Let them go away. Look at that. So, fact, so, so, so let us constantly put our minds in one way mm. that you are dealing with two systems. Two systems, I hear you. Yeah. And these systems have got different values. Mm -hmm. And you have to be quite clear as to which system you belong to. Mm. It's not because you go to judge. Mm -mm. No. It is about your conviction as a person and as a Christian. Mm. Are you obeying God? Which God are you obeying? Do you know Him? Do you serve Him? Mm. Do you obey Him? Yes. If you do that, then it doesn't matter. Mm. Whether it's a politician or whoever it is, who will come to you and try to misguide you? You, are, you have a higher calling. Mm -hmm. So evangelism. Mm. In fact, with that Dr. Karanj, I had this one. <laughs> that was in Senate. Uh, he called for the prosecution of abortionists and uh, abortion NGOs for genocide and, you know, called for their prosecution. Then um, his testimony was actually called outrageous and extremely radical. He was called, mm. but surely, mm. abortionists. And they causing a crime against humanity. They are. They are. It's a crime against they humanity. Are. They are. So what? What? So what do you do with crimes? Mm. They should be taken to the right place. That's very so true. He may have sounded very radical, mm -hmm. but if you dissect what he said, did he just say, if you are killing people, which is against the law, mm. you have committed a crime. Mm -hmm. So if you have committed a crime, mm -hmm. what should be done with you? Mm -hmm. You should be taken to the court. Mm -hmm. And that's why I was saying mm -hmm. that if we find people who are caught having done the wrong thing mm. and you have evidence, mm -hmm. they go through the court. Mm -hmm. But then remember, you go to pray and fast mm -hmm. because you don't know whether the people who are going to be there, the lawyers and the magistrates, will see it from your eyes. Mm. I think for Christians, we have to remember we are living in a world, mm. a fallen world. Yes, that's whose, true. Whose uh, main uh, operator is Satan. Satan himself. And his agenda is completely different from mine and yours. Mm. And you've got to have your so clear mm. that whatever you do, you are opposite what is doing. Mm -hmm. That's why you come and say, if you have a very good language, the Karaja will bring it that way. Yes. Somebody else will put it in a moderate way. But mm -hmm. if you put them two together, yeah. it's a crime against it humanity. It is a crime against <laughs> humanity. Very interesting. Yeah, that is true. Mm -hmm. Now, again, let, let's now look at, you know, um, this other side where women are talking about prevention and all that. We know a lot about family planning that is is being peddled all over i don't know for what reason but it's flooded everywhere i'm surprised they're actually saying that uh we don't have good family planning methods in africa everyone and people are getting them in chemists and what have you so what is your opinion because there's been controversy you know about contraceptives and whether they actually are part of the family of you know ab abortifacients right i think that's the word so are you these I think when you talk about, first of all, what is family planning? Mm -hmm. Planning a family. Yes. Why would you plan a family? Mm -hmm. Maybe you find that your resources may not be matching what the number of children you can look after. Mm -hmm. Is there anything in the Bible that talks about being able to look after a family and provide for them? Mm -hmm. 
four series, mm -hmm. one Timothy five eight. Mm -hmm. If anybody cannot provide for his family, mm -hmm. particularly mm -hmm. the immediate family, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he is worse than unbeliever, mm -hmm. and he has deserted the faith. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, it's not great. Mm -hmm. Because maybe the resources God has given you can look after five children. Mm -hmm. Now, if you go and have ten, you are showing and they are, they are not uh, having food. You'll be saying that God has not provided. You're worse than unbeliever. Mm -hmm. You're giving the wrong testimony. Mm -hmm. So in other words, and you are living in a world which has got also advances. Mm -hmm. So what would you need to do? Mm -hmm. There are various methods. Mm -hmm. And uh, anything which is contra means is against, against, against conception, right? You have the ones which are artificial, mm -hmm. you have the ones which are um, the artificial and the others which are natural. Okay. You encourage somebody to use the method which is according to what they can do. Mm -hmm. Remember, as a Christian, you can't take your values into the world and put them there. Mm -hmm. Are we agreed? If you're talking about the Christians and the values for the Christian, mm -hmm. then you can bring that on the Christians. Okay. When you have a world mm -hmm. which is not doesn't follow the Christian values mm -hmm. and have other methods of a bush, uh, of uh, methods, and you want to tell them you cannot bring this one now, and say no, you stop that one. Mm -hmm. It's just a telling them mm -hmm. you need to, to to stop aborting people. Mm -hmm. You're bringing a foreign idea to them. So the Christians are the ones who are supposed to see what does it mean to them in the context of that particular verse. Mm -hmm. And as an individual make a decision as a family, mm -hmm. what are they going to do? Mm -hmm. If they are worried about uh, the method, and by the way, not every method is right for everybody, mm -hmm. scientifically. Mm -hmm. It is individualized. Mm -hmm. And you go through, mm -hmm. even whether it is by age or by whatever, how many babies and all that, mm -hmm. they are different. Mm -hmm. So you are going to sit with that person mm -hmm. and counsel them and decide with them. Mm -hmm. And that's why we are against uh, contraceptives for the adolescent mm -hmm. because they are not able to understand. Yeah. So this person should be able to understand what you are talking about. Mm -hmm. Either in that kingdom, you cannot put your values in them mm -hmm. and you cannot prevent them from being what they are supposed to be mm -hmm. because your values are completely different. different right. If it's a Christian, then you can discuss with them. Mm -hmm. It's just like if you look about um, reproduction, we have assisted reproductive technology. Mm -hmm. Everything may be all right mm -hmm. in the kingdom of the world. Yes. But when you come to the believers, there are areas which are not quite, have got controversy and questions. Okay. So when you are talking to people, who are you talking to? And that's why they tell you are imposing your values on them. On them. Right. Right. You cannot right. impose your values on anybody. Mm. You can only persuade them to come to your side. Mm. Then you discuss them from your side. Mm. Okay. okay, okay. So we have to always constantly remember we are in this world. Yes. And we have other people. Mm. And you have to serve both of them. Mm -hmm. So are you wise enough to know what are you doing for this one? Mm -hmm. If it is something which is bad mm -hmm. for both, then you say it. Yes. If you are killing, you are killing. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. That's true. That's true. So remember all the time yes. that you cannot uh, change some of the th some of the things that are going on in that kingdom. In that, yeah. And particularly, um, sorry, let me just take you back to the contraception. IUDs mm. are now said to be the number one abortifacient. Uh, very the, let me first of all say that uh, there is no method of contraception which is uh, which is a hundred percent. So anybody can conceive, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. even if you tie their tubes. Wow, oh, yeah. there's a chance, but smaller. Okay. When you look at them, I have read a paper which says that one of the actions, particularly of the copper, mm -hmm. is to interfere with the motility of the tube so that the egg and the sperm don't oh. eat very easily. Okay, okay. That is as opposed to an IUD, which is going to be hormonal. Okay. The hormonal one, if somebody conceives, that baby is not likely to come into the uterus and be implanted because it makes the inner lining so thin okay. that that baby has nowhere to embark and bed. Okay. And that's why you read about many people who conceived with a quail. Mm -hmm. Of course, they are 
strange stories that the baby came holding up yes. and they don't. <laughs> but the baby the is able to live and come out at the same yes. time. Yes, yeah. And I think because of that uh, idea of um, of uh, mortality, mm -hmm. probably that's why we also say that there is a slightly higher chance mm -hmm. of that baby being an ectopic wow. than a normal one. Because okay. remember, there's that mortality yes, bit. Yes, 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 yes. So that is got to be there. Okay. But again, you got to tell the person you are telling, what you are telling them. Mm -hmm. yes, sir, with knowledge of medicine, mm -hmm. because they are not in your camp. In your camp. <laughs> <laughs> I think that. And, and I think it would be irresponsible if you didn't help them mm -hmm. with what they have, mm -hmm. with the knowledge they have. Mm -hmm. It's. Uh, g g um, you need to help them so that they can also be protected. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So you have to constantly ask yourself, mm -hmm. who are you? Mm -hmm. And who are you talking to? Mm -hmm. And what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. Of course, then that comes again. Mm -hmm. You may find the, there are differences. Mm -hmm. There'll be those people who will be the Catholics, mm -hmm. and those who will uh, go for the natural. Mm -hmm. There'll be some Protestants who will be both for natural and uh, artificial mm -hmm. but you also find a lot of catholics mm -hmm. who are also using artificial oh, methods yeah. mm -hmm. because they'll go back and say it's about me mm -hmm. and my individual. health right and i think if they have read the one team of the five eight mm -hmm. <laughs> they not want to be because that god is not um, uh, you are a Western unbeliever, they don't want to be called Western yeah, unbelievers. No one wants to be called that. <laughs> so some of these things you need to go deeply into who are you talking to and what are you doing. Mm. Mm. Okay. All right. And the future for protecting life movement and for you, as you know, uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Kagia, your vision, where yeah. do you see this so going? Our vision is that we want to create an abortion free society. Okay. Abortion in that you don't want people to go killing babies. And as I said many times, mm -hmm. that crisis pregnancy, mm -hmm. that unplanned pregnancy, mm -hmm. is not a medical problem. Mm -hmm. If you come to me with a headache mm -hmm. and I knock your head, mm -hmm. could one of the treatments. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> but right. I could also give you Panadol, mm -hmm. you know? Yes. So if you come with somebody with a social problem, might be rejected, and I tell you that to remove that pregnancy. You end up with the bleeding, infection, you end up with psychological issues. I gave you the wrong treatment. Mm. And that's why in Protecting Life Movement, we want to give a social solution mm -hmm. to a social problem. Mm. And we started this program, which is called a Rescue Kyoto. Yes. A Kyoto is a bird's nest. Mm -hmm. And we had to think, who, how, what kind of a program do you want to give a social problem? Mm -hmm. You say, you want... Um, a program that is acceptable acceptable to who to the whole society culturally acceptable because you you you, you have a society even if they are not believers they love babies mm -hmm. so as long as you're protecting babies someone can come and join you the next thing is acceptable religiously we are a religious country so as long as you are saving babies you have partners and we saw that during the constitution where people didn't want abortion. So it's acceptable. Is it affordable? We are a low resource country. How are you going to be able to, to give this process? So we say it is you need to get a community based program where you mobilize the communities to come and give. Like you may say, I want to buy them sugar, I want to buy soap, I want to give them bananas, or I've just got maize. You know, everybody giving a little so that the little becomes a lot. So it is affordable. Mm -hmm. Is it acceptable, affordable? Is it a, a, a situation where you can replicate? Uh, rep, uh, rep, uh, mm -hmm. It's a program you rep, can replicate in Nairobi, so in Makueni, right. wherever, in every mm -hmm. county, yes. Mm -hmm. Because you are going to have the PLMT office mm -hmm. as the main body, mm -hmm. you are going to go locally and find a, 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 an operational committee mm -hmm. made of the different churches, in the community because they are our partners mm -hmm. plmt partners with the churches at the ground mm -hmm. in the community mm -hmm. and when i say churches it is not a particular church mm -hmm. all the different churches mm -hmm. whether they are mainstream whether they are evangelical whether they are catholics whether they are mm -hmm. they anybody will 
uh, who is interested in rescuing these girls mm -hmm. because uh, pregnancy does in no denominations. Mm -hmm. So true. it is going to be that and then it's charged. Mm -hmm. Then you ask yourself, we have to ask yourself, why the charge? Because the church obeys God. It says that you should not kill. Exodus 20, 13. Mm -hmm. Why? In Kenya, it was one of the major organizations that fought against the organization of abortion. Mm -hmm. So to be a good partner. Yes. The church also has got structures mm -hmm. from the grassroots to national, some of them internationally. Mm -hmm. So they would be very good partners mm -hmm. for us to work with. Mm -hmm. Then we thought, okay, so how do you go to this church. The churches, because they go with the Bible, you got to look for something which is biblical to win them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so again, our project came from the Bible. the Bible. Went to the book of Exodus. If you go to the end of uh, Exodus chapter 1, mm -hmm. you'll find that um, Hebrews were going too many, mm -hmm. and Pharaoh wanted them killed, mm -hmm. and threw, killed at birth, mm -hmm. and the midwives cheated. So they come out quickly, mm -hmm before you know the baby is out mm -hmm. they thought okay if it comes a boy mm -hmm. just throw out into the nile mm -hmm. and we all know you are believers mm -hmm. that uh, you remember moses uh, mother by the, the the mother was called jacob the wife of a levite yeah she went and got the baby mm -hmm. she hid the baby and when it was not hideable mm -hmm. <laughs> she took the baby took a basket mm -hmm. made the basket herself mm -hmm and put the baby in the basket herself mm -hmm. and obeyed Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. Took the baby to River Nile mm -hmm. where the boys were supposed to be taken. Mm -hmm. But he took precaution so that her baby is not washed away by the Nile. Oh, no. Who takes not to be washed. Mm. And lo and behold, and then she took one of her children, her yeah. daughters, right. to go and be the one who is looking after this, overseeing the baby. Mm. Then what happened? Pharaoh's daughter came bathing she had no bathroom she came bathing in the river <laughs> and the rest you know the story yes, yes. so we looked at that story and said if we go to the church with such a model wow. they are likely to be our partners mm -hmm. because we tell them our girls are being washed out by the river nile of abortion wow. as suicide mm. can we as church be like moses mother mm. and construct a basket Baskets. hence wow. Kyoto, mm -hmm. like a bird's nest. Wow, that name was that. coined by, was in, uh, recommended by women in Moranga, wow. Moranga County. So mm. you put them in that basket. What does that mean? Because you are Christians, again, the values in that basket wow. will be within the female fa values. Mm -hmm. And that's why you find when Moses was rescued by Pharaoh's daughter, she did not say, go and bring him up as an Egyptian. Mm -hmm. She said, I will pay you to look after that baby. Wow. So in our in our setup, yeah. a Kyoto can only be looked after by people of the same family. Those are Christians. Yes. And even those who are working there must be Christians, wow. working with God. Mm. So that they don't bring these uh, other values. Yes. Did you give her the Distortion. option of an abortion is a right? Ah. Or did you give her the contraceptives is a ah. right? We are after the transformation of that girl mm. in coming to know Christ mm. so that she is transformed. Mm -hmm. So even the people who work there are like Miriam, mm -hmm. Moses' uh, sister. Yes. However, Pharaoh's daughter came mm -hmm. and she was going to pay for the service. Mm -hmm. So if you have a donor who is going to be we register them as Pharaoh's daughter, mm -hmm. <laughs> they'll come, but they'll not be allowed mm -hmm. to come and be involved in the running of the home. Okay. Okay, okay. Even if you give, let's say, 100,000 shillings or 10,000 shillings, mm -hmm. you cannot come back and tell us, by the way, my campaign manager mm -hmm. um, uh, has a daughter who needs to be employed. You have an option. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 no. Mm -hmm. We have standards yes. that must be paid mm -hmm. because this is from the biblical point of view yes. yeah. and we are Christians. Yes. But that we have to do. Wow. Wow. So, uh, initially got the first home in Moranga. Mm -hmm. Why Moranga? Mm -hmm. Because somebody gave us a house. Mm -hmm. When we were thinking of starting, and that was in 2010, God told us we are going to start this program in 2011. Mm -hmm. And we didn't have the land. We, had only, uh, we, we, we didn't have any land. We didn't have anything. Then God said, I have very many idle homes. Mm -hmm. Go and claim them. Wow. 
Wow. And I shared in one of the Bible study groups. Mm. And I said, the God, yes. the Lord said, the Lord of harvest. exactly, Lord of harvest. He said, go and uh, claim these homes. Mm -hmm. And I'm excited telling members of the Bible study, the Lord said, we claim homes. Mm. And somebody the following week came and told us, you have a four bedroom house in one. Wow. We've given it to you. Mm. Start your ministry there. Mm. We are not going to charge you even for rent mm. or anything. Start mm. your ministry. Mm. So we started there. Yes. And we started in 2011. Mm -hmm. Then in 2015, mm -hmm. before 2015, we are saying, you know, somebody else has also given a house in Kuala, mm -hmm. another family. Wow. So I'm sharing with my members of committee and I'm telling them, you know, go back to the Bible. Yes. There comes a Pharaoh who doesn't know Joseph. Mm. Suppose these children later come and say, our parents gave you the house, but you want our house back. Uh -huh. What would we do? Mm. So we went into prayer and said, God provide us with a house. Mm. It's a long story. Mm -hmm. But in 2016, mm -hmm. after I had shared that in a women's ministry mm -hmm. conference, mm -hmm. somebody came and said, when you presented during that meeting, mm -hmm. God told me, go and give them one acre of your land in Muranga. Wow. But Masai Lad, where there's a lot of land. Wow. Muranga. Muranga. I know Muranga. Yeah. And we were given one acre of land. And through a miracle, within six months, we had a title deed. She said, you can do all the transactions, payments. Yes. But your land is yours. So we have a land. Mm -hmm. So we, so now we have a land in Muranga. A whole one acre. Mm -hmm. And then there comes a pharaoh. The owners of the house in the other side of Muranga, their children went to the house. So what do you do? You have a piece of land and you need to move. Mm -hmm. So you are given a certain time to move. Mm -hmm. We trusted God. Mm -hmm. It's another story for another day. Mm -hmm. And we are able to put up mm -hmm. a four-roomed house wow. within three months. Wow. Starting at 600,000 shillings, which we had wow. run the ministry. Wow. But the Lord provided. He provided. And we are able to provide it. But what I want to see is what God told this uh, family, this lady. That ministry is mine. Yes. Go and give them one because of Beautiful. Beautiful. So PLMT mm -hmm. doesn't want the ministry. Mm -hmm. Doesn't want uh, uh, these things. God these things does. are God. God he, he wants children mm -hmm. rescued. Amen. I'm, I'm encouraged. <laughs> I'm encouraged of the young for life. And just to ask, uh, because a lot of people have taken advantage mm -hmm. on the language. Mm -hmm. The medical language and mm. the constitutional mm. language. Yeah. What do you think should be done? Should we change the language? Should it be amended? Mm. Because we have seen, as 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 many Christian. Yes, we mm. are a Christian country. Mm. We are believer. Mm. But uh, you see, people are taking advantage at our eyes. Mm. And when we go calling calling them uh, um, genocides. We are told we are radical extremists. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you see, again, so where are you living in? Mm -hmm. You're living in a country. Mm -hmm. That agenda of pro-life may be one of the few agendas which are wrong with the Constitution. Mm -hmm. So nobody is going to sit there and say, I'm going to change the agenda for the pro-lifers. No. And that may be a very long process before it comes. Mm -hmm. What is your role and my role? It is to educate people about the sanctity of, of life. life. Mm. How they should protect, defend, and uphold the sanctity of life. Mm. I'm a believer that if you went with that message and you are able to mobilize everybody to the grassroots, mm. machinani, mm. if you went and did mm. that, mm. Even if the laws were there, mm. they brought out the written laws. Mm. There'd be nobody to obey them. That's true. Because first of all, you'd be busy preventing that unwanted pregnancy. Mm -hmm. You'd be very busy to educating men, the other gender, mm -hmm. that when you see that girl, mm -hmm. look at her as your daughter. Yes. yes. Look at her as your sister. Yes. Look at her as your cousin. Mm -hmm. Look at her as your niece. Mm -hmm. Look at her as your grandchild. Mm -hmm. By the way, we are just about to get another girl who was made pregnant by her grandfather. Uh, so, Goodness. so that they respect and protect yes. this gender. Yes, yes. So, yes, if yes. you went and changed that, mm. and if you went and told people mm -hmm. 
that even if they get pregnant, because physiology will be working mm -hmm. in these young people, mm -hmm. do not throw them away because particularly being believers, your mandate is to love. Mm -hmm. And if you don't love them, you've already sinned. Mm -hmm. So if you throw them out, you have sinned double. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So if we can make everybody come that kind of mind, mm -hmm. and uh, we change the people on the ground, mm -hmm. laws can be get, uh, gathering dust. Mm -hmm. But and that's why I go back to the same statement I had made earlier: mm. that evangelism mm. and discipleship mm. has to be taken very seriously mm. from the lowest level to the highest mm. level, so that the heart of man will be changed mm -hmm. to be in conformity mm. with the rules of the kingdom of God. Mm. I think that's our mandate. Right but there. we can waste a lot of energy yeah. trying to change at 20, 26 and doing other things. What is if you use that energy to change the people's hearts and minds, you are likely to get better so results. The reproach is what we should The reproach, the, the, yes. The, the, and the so how. We sh the how, mm. the so strategy. We should, we should stop being reactive and be proactive. Proactive, I yes. That. I get Even that. Even if the, when the part time for changing the question will come, we shall be very active. Very. Because we are Kenyans, mm. we'll be joining them. Mm. For example, if they are going to discuss uh, capital punishment, yes. we are going to stand up mm -hmm. and talk about it. Mm -hmm. Yes, if you are talking about uh, the healthcare, reproductive healthcare services, which should be the highest uh, level, mm. we, and people are fighting over it, we are going to say because we are Kenyans, mm. but at the spiritual level, we need to focus on having everybody change mm. so that they belong to another kingdom and their behavior mm -hmm. will be the behavior of what is described in 1 Peter 2.9. Mm -hmm. You are in one of the uh, translations, which I like, the reverse version. You are a peculiar people. Mm. <laughs> a peculiar, a peculiar people. people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> God's chosen people. Mm -hmm. You are different. You are mm -hmm. supposed to show the purposes of God. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to be like everybody else. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. And once your focus is completely changed, mm -hmm. you're not going to focus on the things of this world. Mm -hmm. You're going to focus on God. Mm -hmm. Once you do that, mm -hmm. then you'll be looking for opportunities mm -hmm. to bring this one in. Mm -hmm. If it is fighting the reproductive health, mm -hmm. you'll have understood it and you bring in your voice. Mm -hmm. If it is in removing Article 26 or whatever, mm -hmm. verse 4 and moving those unwritten laws, mm -hmm. you'll be busy because you are all rounded mm -hmm. and you have the wisdom and the knowledge of what is going around. Mm -hmm. You'll be like the sons of Issachar in the Chronicles. Mm -hmm. The 200 men, you remember them. Right. They understood their times yes, yes. and knew what should be done. Mm -hmm. So what do we do when we start, start the times? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of immorality. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't we think of what to do with the mora with morality? The morality right. Is there any other cure for immorality except mm -hmm. the gospel? Mm -hmm. So share the gospel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what would you say about the Kihika bill? What would you tell her <laughs> if, if you, you were know, to if I, if, if she was seated here, yes. I'll tell her thank you very much mm -hmm. for having desired mm -hmm. to have a bill. Mm -hmm. Because all these laws need a bill mm -hmm. to guide them. Mm -hmm. But however, mm -hmm. look at the things which are going to be beneficial mm -hmm. to the population of Kenya. Mm -hmm. And things which are going to not be in conflict with the constitution. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to get things that are going to destroy our young people and go against the constitution, mm -hmm. like if you talk of uh, giving reproductive health serv care services, mm. which in the broad term will include, there'll be the counseling, there'll be the teaching, but there'll be also mm -hmm. uh, giving contraceptives, uh, giving uh, abortion abortions, yeah. uh, which are going to be against the constitution, against to the Children's Act, mm -hmm. against parental guidance. Mm -hmm. When you look at that, understand what the constitution says. And whatever bill you bring it in conformity with that. Mm -hmm. That is one. Two, understand like the sons of uh, Isaka. What population right. are you dealing with? Mm. The last census showed that we are now 83% Christian. So you have a highly religious community. community. That's true. Don't worry about the depth of their Christianity, of mm. their religiousness. Yeah. But know that they are religious. Mm. And if you bring anything that is going to touch on their teaching mm -hmm. and, and their beliefs, mm -hmm. you are going to get in trouble. Mm -hmm. Three, every law according to our constitution there must be public participation 
So it is good for you mm -hmm. to go and uh, bring a law, give it a good public participation. Mm -hmm. Not a few people reading articles here and there. Mm -hmm. Let everybody understand it. Mm -hmm. So that whatever comes is what is acceptable. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at the same one, mm -hmm. you can see it is like he's trying to bring in comprehensive yes, sexuality, sexual education, right, education right, 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 yes. which is another thing which is going to sexualize our children. Yeah, yeah. Because that one teaches children that sex is their right. Imagine. They must do it where they wish, huh. do it whoever they wish, where, whatever they wish, whatever position, and the parents must not know. Oh, no. I don't know whether you are aware, I have but the program that has been piloted yes. in Kenya oh, my goodness. is called The World Starts With Me. Oh my, I piloted think I have heard in that. Kenya yes, yes. Without, parents without parental knowledge. knowledge. Oh my goodness. So these things are tend to be brought to Ada. Mm. It's what is going to be fought. Mm. And unfortunately when they are fought, when they are already going on, every becomes very sense everybody becomes very sensational. Mm. But if for example it was brought earlier, mm. a people discussed and said, What do we have in terms of sexuality education in the country? Mm. Then KICD, which is supposed to be looking after all the curriculums, mm -hmm. will come and say, we have a program which is called Life Skills. Mm -hmm. We have a book called Life Skills. Mm -hmm. And every class has a lesson mm -hmm. on life skills. Mm -hmm. Then you go back and say, but our children being bought, taught on life skills, you discover no. Mm -hmm. So why aren't they being taught in that subject? Mm -hmm. It is not examinable. Mm -hmm. So if I have not finished my syllabus, mm -hmm. and they're going to be examined in March and I've not finished March, I'd rather you try that subject that time to make sure that my children, mm -hmm. or my class goes through that. Mm -hmm. Two, have we trained all the teachers in a way that they understand the life skills or are, are they deficient? If they're deficient, they are going to avoid teaching because you only teach what you can, what you, you have. Oh, yeah. When you look at it that way, then if you teach it, look at the, 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 the gaps that are missing. Try to meet them, whether it is the training, whether it is uh, enforcing that training. Then you look at the results of it. If you find that it is not good enough, then you can review that one. You can also review it in the context of other new emerging books, like the world starting you, with you. And you look at it and say, yeah, there's a chapter here which should, could include in this one. Mm. But the world starts with you was taken to KICD. And KICD rejected because of the moral yeah. aspect of it. Yeah, yeah. Good job. Good job. And then it was taken behind the back door again mm. to the Minister of Education. Mm -mm. And it was piloted oh, without people knowing. Good so God. if you are going to bring a, a reproductive care, health care bill, mm which is going to show that you are trying to bring sexuality education in that way, mm -hmm. my goodness, is going to be fought mm -hmm. yes, by this community. To, yeah? I, I, I won't allow my daughter or my son. But how would you but know? But they're being to school, you don't even know but it. I the books. You I won't. I was so surprised. You won't. But it yeah. is, it, uh, the teaching of World Starts With Me is in soft copy mm. with a password. Even the principal himself has not seen it imagine and they come it's an NGO if they'll come and bring it yeah. they have their own lecturers mm. they teach and then they get all that information and then you bring it to the to the to the government and say so many the percentage of children adolescents who are sexually active is this I've been to one of the meetings the Minister of Education and I've told them mm. if I want to do a research on sexuality on children and have a program I'll go and take a group of hardy children mm -hmm. and ask them how many of you are sexually active? Let's say about two or three six. Mm -hmm. Then I'll come back. I'll teach them how it starts with me. Sex is your right. You can do it, blah, blah, blah. And then I'll come back and ask them, how many of you are sexually active? I may find the number has gone to 30 Imagine. or 20. Imagine. Now, I can write a paper and say among the adolescents in these classes, 20% are sexually active. And because I belong to another kingdom of darkness yeah. and Satan, mm. cheating will be allowed. Mm -hmm. They cheat a lot. So, they actually do. so I'll cheat and say 20% of the youth are sexually active. 
and therefore we need the, uh, the youth friendly clinics and everybody will listen because you are bringing statistics all i need to do is this from our figures so how many youth do you have so what is the percentage of youth which are sexually active so and because it's evidence you cannot question me but i did not tell you that i prepared this particular cohort mm. no mm. i won't tell you because my idea is completely different different i have an agenda which must be taken forward mm. and those are the things that we need to know yeah go on yes behind our knowledge Imagine. Imagine. and so when you see people talking being reactive it's because they have seen things the day i heard about it my my well, my hair could not start I can imagine. but i was angry yeah i listened to a beep beep secret where a child was asked whether they are taught about sexual sexuality they did yes, in a summation what and then she said yeah sometimes you go to classes at about uh, five o'clock in the morning so that we practice that's a child giving practice every what? but if you teach the people practice theory they have to do practical oh no they were taught and they are taught and it has been done in this country without the parental knowledge or consent. Where did the, um, the Children's Act go? Mm -hmm. Where did our laws go? Mm -hmm. And that's why you go back to the place of abortion. Mm -hmm. There are so many players in these it things is, yeah. with so many agendas mm -hmm. that unless the, this world of darkness and Satan is interfered with mm -hmm. and brought to the other mm -hmm. side, mm -hmm. we are in trouble. They are not mentioned in this bill at all. Then I looked at the professional health care providers. This bill is surprising enough. It says that the professional health providers are midwives, are clinical officers, and registered nurses. There is no mention of the doctors at the introduction. And if you are going to go through Article 43, which talks about every person has a right to the highest attainable standard of uh, of health care including reproductive health surely a doctor of the highest uh, qualification must be included even when you come to the termination of pregnancy according to article 26 the person who is supposed to be trained is not just trained for two three days we believe that they must have the skills of decision making and looking after this particular person in terms of service why because article 26 one says the everybody has the right to life and two that life started conception so if anybody is going to kill that baby they must have the highest standard of decision making and um, and be able to do it in the best possible way that way you need the highest qualified person when you look at the healthcare provider this provider, I'm just about to finish, Mr. Chairman. This healthcare yes. provider because is part of um, has uh, some regulatory bodies which look into the care of uh, the kind of medical care they provide. Now, to say that they are going to be regulated by the court, given penalties so very high penalties, is going to affect our care in this particular country.